All right, welcome to the Save Cast number 166 with guides for us all, or Shelby. Shelby, how are we doing today? Doing great. And yeah, you could just call me Shelby. Anyone can. Guides for us all is way too much of a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> <It really is. laughs> I was I've, 15, okay. I, I, so have you ever like considered re, rebranding is like the scariest thing you could ever do as like a YouTuber? Oh, absolutely. Like. Yeah. Uh, have you ever like approached that? Like, or are you just like scared of it? Or are you just like, ah, whatever, I'm just going to keep it guides for us all until the end of time? Well, I've kind of rebranded as well because my old name was SSD Middleman that I've had since I was like five or something. So changing to Guides for Assault was kind of a rebrand. And then I thought, man, this is way too much of a mouthful. But I don't know what I would change it to at this point. <laughs> yeah, no, that's I did my rebrand. My rebrand was like pretty much nothing. I used to go by Say Bay Bay, but they were it was like S-A-Y-B-A-Y-B-A-Y. I thought I was crazy. I swear I remember you going by that, but I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't no, think I, about it. It was such a slight change. Well, first of all, like my Twitch is Sater now, which is actually my real life first name, and then my YouTube is also the at is Sater, but I just go by Sebe on there, so like the name of it Sebe. And so people now I'm getting like the confusion with people. They're saying like, "Oh, I didn't even know Sater and Sebe were the same people." Like I didn't know you guys. Would say, <laughs> so I'm just like. Uh, but the problem is, like, I would have fully rebranded to Sebe, but, like, if I wanted to rebrand on Twitch to Sebe, I would have had to have an underscore. And I, like, hate underscores. I hate them so much. And yeah. I didn't want to combine them and not have an underscore because then people would be like, is it Sebe without a space or with a space? And it's always been with. So, it's a mess. Yeah, it gets confusing at a certain point for sure. Yeah. So, so like, w do you think you'll ever rebrand or are you pretty much good where you're at? I think I'm probably stuck with this until the end of time, honestly. <laughs> it's too ingrained. Maybe maybe I could convince YouTube to just give me the channel name Shelby. People know me as that, I guess. But That would be intense. That I don't know who I need to talk to about that. Yeah. That, is there, there's probably like a popular channel with that name already, right? Probably. Yeah, I'm sure there's a good few. So Maybe one day. So, so where did that name so you said you ssd what what was the first oh one? so my mom needed to make me an email when i was five for some stupid game i wanted to sign up for online and so she came up with that name because ssd is my initials and i was the middle mm, child okay. so okay yeah. i see <laughs> <laughs> so i just kept that for yeah. so long well again rebranding from that was good so guides for us all though where did that name even originate from was it was were you just looking at being like a guides kind of channel or what yeah, exactly that. I made like a few guides on my old channel and I love doing it. So I was like, okay, I'll just make a whole channel just for making guides on games. And that's where this name came from, basically. And you so said, let's like, I, I actually need to get a brief history of your whole YouTube channel because when I clicked on your so I did like a, a little detective work. I, I usually do a, a tiny little bit with uh, upcoming guests, but I like, I browsed your channel and the popular stuff and like nothing's OSRS related when I see like the popular <laughs> the popular stuff you've done. So so what exactly was your aim initially with YouTube? Was it literally just everything gaming or just like what? Well, I've had a ton of different YouTube channels in the past, but the goal with this one was just just to make guides. Like if you just sort by oldest videos, it's all just like be castle crashers leveling up, you know, Fallout, how to make caps fast or whatever. Stuff like that was really my jam back in the day. And then eventually it kind of segued into making more youtube -y videos of games wait, wait so so when did you go to like full-on runescape uh, how Ooh, many years ago like was that seven or eight years ago i think yeah it was a gradual transition i used to make videos on warframe you know shout out to anybody who knows about that leave a comment but uh <laughs> yeah i did that full time that was my full-time game super into it and then i started playing old school runescape again so i did play it since it dropped in what 2013 like 10 years ago or something and then, uh, so I played it since then, but I was like, I'm going to make a series on this. And I said, don't worry, my channel's not going to become, you know, full-time old school RuneScape or anything. <laughs> and then we all know how that worked out. So, <laughs> yeah, this is something where I, I've heard from other popular YouTubers, like sometimes having a channel that just has a bunch of random stuff on it can like affect the algorithm negatively. I think I've heard from like, maybe with solo mission or settle, they've kind of talked about this sort of algorithmic sort of check where it's like you don't want to just be publishing random videos on your main channel because then it's going to affect like your your big series views um that's why like settled and solo mission now have like their 
alternate channels where they can make rambles and other things like that on it and they wouldn't they wouldn't do it on their normal channel because they feel like it would negatively affect views have you noticed anything like that on your own channel of like changing drastically the things you've done and the series you've made and stuff yeah so like with the old videos i don't think they've affected it too negatively if they have i haven't really noticed it too much but when i make a video that's really different than what i usually upload the next few videos i make they do get recommended less and get less views like every time Mm. Is that something you like worry about or are you pretty much just like expecting it and you're like, eh, whatever, like a little bit of both. I think the worry has gotten more of me over the past like year or two. I haven't really been making much else other than my standard series, even though I do want to start, you know, doing weird offshoot videos again. So maybe I will make a second RuneScape channel. God, I never imagined having two channels for RuneScape. <laughs> <laughs> shorts seem like you can actually do that on your main i don't actually know again i haven't actually seen any sort of like negatives or positives necessarily with shorts being added to like a main channel yeah i'm not sure the effect it has on the algorithm exactly but i can say that they have done pretty well for me i can try and pull it up and see yeah how they performed on my channel exactly they're pretty i mean i've uploaded maybe like 12 or 15 shorts and like one of the, I, I thought for some reason before I had ever uploaded a short, I thought there was kind of like a, a, a huge like undertaking to get into like the shorts algorithm. Like you have to upload hundreds and hundreds of shorts for you to start finally getting right or something. But no, like straight up like three shorts in one of them had like a hundred thousand views plus. I'm like, what? Like, I, I'm not <laughs> yeah. even like, this is crazy. Yeah. No, no it is wild. Yeah. Those things go hard. Like I've made, I'm counting it up right now. I've made like 29 or 30 of them or so since I started last year and I've gained almost 3000 subscribers from it and I've gotten over 4 million views on just like 30 shorts. That's And are Done you the well. one making them? Oh yeah. I'm just throwing them together about just whatever random thing I think to make. Like my first one, I speed ran petting every dog in the game, which is like the dumbest one I've ever made. The rest of them are better, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's that's kind of the cool thing is like they, they are so, they're like Snapchats. It's like it doesn't even matter if they were that amazing or anything. Yeah. Um, at least from the get-go. Like you could just kind of upload like and just learn as you go because seriously, like nobody's going to be watching your old shorts like a year down the line. So. Right, exactly. It's kind of like starting YouTube over again, trying to relearn how to yeah. make it in that form it's like the restrictions kind of make you get a little creative with it yeah that that's really cool damn three thousand subs you say just from the short yeah yeah that's it's crazy wild. is there gonna be something that's even more captivating to humans like just shorts i swear to god they're just they're so addicting yeah Dude. probably i never know what'll be the next big thing <laughs> like what could it even be it, it's got to be something where <laughs> it's got to be something where you just like plug it into your brain it's like you don't even have to swipe or anything it's just endless looping of just i don't i don't know dude. yeah we're gonna get a chip to be able to understand stuff faster so there'll be five <laughs> second loops of like 20 times speed videos just <laughs> blasting through our heads <laughs> there was this there was this short of like this guy it was like uh, the, the first person to get like a Neuralink transplant <laughs> it was like the, it was like the budget version so it's like this advertisement of like some random car like dealership or something like in his head like on repeat because he decided that to get the budget ad free or the the non ad free version, so he's just like in his brain permanently. <laughs> these advertisements. I hope I'm dead by then. I'll be good. I'm I'm fine. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! It actually, that does sound horrible. But it, it it's is, hilarious. It is actually terrifying. Like, <laughs> like it, it, there's so many bad incentives, especially with like in regards to advertising and stuff. Like, it's literally just what can get the most amount of views most engagement most everything and they've done studies on this and it's always anger based oh like, yeah for sure like you just have to piss people off enough and you know, <laughs> you'll get an engagement it works i've noticed that happens like if i mispronounce something in a video on accident there i'll get like 50 comments of people correcting me and i'll be like why is this video doing so much better <laughs> You know, you could see people doing that. If you pay attention to some old school videos, someone will, you could tell they might be purposely saying something wrong to bait the comments. Dude, that's what Behemoth was. I, I, I couldn't tell if Behemoth, and this is like, oh, not Bald Behemoth, but the, the original Behemoth, he was, yeah. he would do the stupidest stuff like that. But it, it, it was, he would pull it off so well. It's like, are you, are you just actually like 
kind of just dumb like you didn't know what this word meant or something are you just like are you literally just that galaxy brain that you are just randomly saying the stupidest thing just so that you can farm engagement in the comments and it was definitely that because he was uploading daily like he he probably got oh, yeah. that stuff down to a t hmm. i think the ambiguity is what sells it you know people know you're doing it they'll get used to it but if you if they're kind of thinking is he dumb does he know what he's yeah. doing here it kind of keeps the <laughs> keeps the dream going keeps you thinking <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny like that oh and i've also seen like thumbnails like there, there's something about having a thumbnail that's like slightly uncanny that really really like makes the algorithm pop as well like like something that's where so you're like what is wrong with the guy like there if there's just something wrong like i've even seen people make thumbnails of like a person's face and they'll give him like 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 you know like one false tooth or something or like one of his tooth will be out they're like they'll just kind of like shade it in black so it's like whoa like why does that guy like why does that guy have a missing tooth or like why does that guy look like he has a black eye or why does that guy look like he has like just like the most random shit but for some <laughs> reason we just want to click on it because it's like what the fuck is going on like you're just you're just so intrigued if it was just a normal person's looking face you're just like okay i'm not gonna like there's nothing Nothing that's capturing right. me immediately, but this is a weird dude. That is so weird to think about, but yeah, I could I could see why that would work, but it's just it, it sounds ridiculous. But the things that so work on us about us noticing, yeah, oh, of course, yeah, it's it's crazy out there with the like the clickbait strategies have gotten so deep. It's it's wild. <laughs> yeah, let's I guess get a like a little bit more of an introduction of who you are for maybe those that haven't uh, checked out your channel. What do you? Uh, known for now as a youtuber all right so nowadays i mainly just make content on old school runescape of course i do a series where i just try to fill in the collection log as much as i can which i've been doing for god knows how many years like four and a half years or something <laughs> then i've got a hardcore iron man which by some miracle is still alive as well i still make videos on that and that's pretty much all i've been doing for the past little while okay um and you're still enjoying like collection log seems it well it is endless you, yeah oh yeah have, no. it, what, has, have you ever like <laughs> reconsidered that or are you actually just straight up still enjoying it oh i only reconsider it like three times a day it's not too big of a deal <laughs> but no I, <laughs> it's it's still fun to do but like man some of it is so daunting because i'll say oh i'm just gonna do this until i get a log slot or i'll just do this till i get an item but you know how this game works that doesn't uh, yeah. that's not how it works sometimes and it can get miserable it's... when i get too committed to something totally have you had any burnouts? Oh yeah, like yesterday. I was doing Tombs of a Mascot. <laughs> yes. And I got I got invited to a group TOA. Normally I just run them all solo. I do like yeah. solo four hundreds, but I get invited to a group and I haven't done group TOA in like six months. So I wiped like five times. I just got embarrassed. I'm like, I'm oh. sorry guys. I'm getting off for the day. I just didn't play at all last night anymore. Dude, what is up with TOA? It's it's something about TOA, man. That place it just is burns you out. It's horrible. It's so bad. I am so lucky. I got my seven unique items there. Or is it oh, seven? Yeah. It's seven, right? Yeah, I think or it's seven. Maybe I'm yeah, I'm, I'm happy for you that you're done. Well, you know, as a collection logger, you're not done until you get the 2,000 kill count cape, you know? Oh, you got to stay there for yeah, all 2,000. I will see that. That is the point of collection log. Like, I, as a, cl I am a mild clogger. Like, I don't, I'm not taking it to the absolute extremes, mainly because I know it can't be completed. Right. So right. I have to literally, I've had to consciously made an, make an effort to just be like, I am going to still try to enjoy this game somehow <laughs> without like just falling into the trap of like, I'm going to go do 2000 fucking CMs or 2000 TOAs just because I get a number on this fucking like checklist of like endless check. Like I just can't do that. Like it's just... Uh, yeah, I think that's a healthy mind. So there's a lot of log stuff that I just don't really go for. Honestly, like I'm probably not going to go for 1000 LMS wins or the 2k chambers cape or anything like yeah, that. because I just, just don't enjoy it enough. It, it's just a lot. And, and, and the thing is, like, there's always other things you can be doing instead. 100%. Yeah. So like you may as well, if the number is the most important thing, then you may as well just go for like the quicker ones, I guess. But it's kind of hard because... 
I don't know. That, it's a death trap, man. The collection log, being a clogger is a death trap. I mean, you just, just, like, it is. If you try to make it your main thing, yeah, it can get miserable. I love it as a little side thing. That's what I always encourage people. I'm like, just do what you find fun in the game, but don't yeah. like force yourself to grind the miserable stuff. Like, you don't need a max cape. You know, you, you need like level 70 and all the stats or something to be able to do everything minus combats. You know, mm -hmm. don't sit there and do 10,000 agility laps if you don't really like doing that. Yeah, I mean, Max Capes, I guess, is a little bit different story because Max Cape is just so broken. Like, if you can. Could... Yeah, but you can have it in like two inventory spots, basically, if you bring crafting and concave. I mean, it's almost the same thing. Yeah, yeah, no. Especially if you've never had one before. And that's most people yes. you're talking to. Like, if you've never yeah. had a Max Cape, you, it's just, it's whatever. As soon as you get one, though, losing it, oh my God, <laughs> that's going to. When sailing hits, dude, like, we're, we're all going to be on boats for like the next two months. And yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't actually, wait to lose the Max Cape. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really excited for sailing, honestly. And, Same. But the losing the Max. Well, the thing is, losing the Max Cape is not going to be a big deal because you know every single person is going to be out on the sea and everyone's yeah. going to be in the same boat. No. Was that a, was that intended yeah, pun? That was an intended pun. Yeah, no, everyone's, I like that. <laughs> yeah, everyone's everyone's gonna be on the same boat, and we're all just. Together. I just really hope Iron Man can be on other people's boats. I know that would like totally kill the skill if you actually have to do that all by yourself. Because it seems like they're trying hard to make it have a more social aspect, which I like. Yeah, I I just hope they do that. Like we, I I know they're still like that. I don't know. We're like we're we're living in 2024. Are we really still going to be like Iron Man need to do everything by themselves? It's kind of like I don't know. Like they've done. I think they made a great. I don't know if you've done any of like the Wildy bosses. I haven't been super mm -hmm, up to date yeah. on your um, clogging adventures, but like being able to do the multi bosses as an Iron Man and still get drops is wonderful. I think that was phenomenal. I think that was a great thing to do. That shouldn't have been the case. It should have just been like, you know, from the if we were still in the standards of the, you know, 2015, it's like, no, 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 Iron Man cannot be benefited in any way possible. That, yeah. I don't know. I just, I like the way they're kind of transitioning where Iron Man can do raids with everybody. They can do these multi bosses with people. They, they were able to do Nightmare on release with people and stuff. Like, that was great. And I hope they do that with sailing. I agree. I think that that change in mindset of Iron Man mode to mostly just being the self-gathering restriction is the main aspect. Mm -hmm. I think that's really where most of the fun of Iron Man lies for the broad community. Because, I mean, you meet, you see like a lot of people in-game have an Iron Man, even people who play mostly main accounts. And I think it just brings you back to that childhood feeling. You know, back in the day, you'd gather all your U-logs to Fletch. You'd, you know, cut down magic trees to Fletch your own magic longbows and alk them or whatever, even though it's horribly inefficient. We would all do it, and it was more fun that way. Yep. So I think that's the beauty of Iron Man mode mostly. You know, the self-restriction challenge can be fun for some people, but I don't I don't think that would perfectly appeal to the broader player base. Like if you had to solo Chambers and Toa or God forbid oh. even TOB, I think people would just quit the game. <laughs> yeah, you're just taking it too far. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, Yeah, no, you're you're right. So this is something I'm curious of. I want to talk about this. This is obviously a, like a hot topic this past week of the God alignment prayers. Mm -hmm. That I mean, if I don't know if you saw the Twitter thread on it, it's just I saw some responses. It, yeah. It's always foe is always the first person that I always see the respond. <laughs> to it. He's sitting there foaming at the mouth, ready to respond every time, right? <laughs> I think he just gets the most <laughs> amount of likes, like instantaneously, yeah. and he's like one of the people I follow, and so it's just like he's always pinned up at the very top, and whatever he says is just like, all right, like, fucking yeah, hell yeah. Um, but yeah. he, he was not happy with it. Will wasn't happy. Obviously, uh, obviously, I'm following It's Will, and he was just mm -hmm. memeing about it. Just a bunch of people are just seeing this whole thing as just this convoluted mess. There's too much going on. Old school is supposed to be simple. What are you doing? And it seemed like the vast majority of people thought that way. But And this is, this is how I've been thinking. I'm like, we, we got to keep old school simple. But I was under the illusion... Or maybe it's not an illusion. Maybe it's actually the case. And I've, ju I've just only seen the people that are really like opposed to this. But I thought a lot of the player base wanted these new prayers. And then all of a sudden they propose them and everyone's against it. So I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I'm, that's fine, I guess. Like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not losing any sleep over not having new prayers. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah. what, what are your thoughts on this? 
I think it's just the ideas for the prayers themselves that are so bad. Cause like I, you know, I saw that Reddit post got like a while ago that got a bunch of attention about mm -hmm. this idea of the God alignments. And I thought, Oh, that's a great way to introduce new prayers. I'm sick of, you know, getting scrolls from this content or this content or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. give it from some quests. That'd be cool. But you know, some of the ideas are just weird and way too convoluted. And, uh, you know, they had something that was like for one tick after attacking, there's an enemy that takes more, like, I don't know what they're thinking about. Some of these weird things where you have to think about it and then how do they show that that's happening? Do you have to be in Discord with your buddy like, all right, in two ticks, I'm going to use the harmonized <laughs> prayer and then you have to attack with your Void Waker one tick out. Like nobody wants to do that. That sounds like World of Warcraft, 40 man Discord call where everyone's screaming at each other. <laughs> we like this game because I could just grab my mouse and click on the screen, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It seems so. like inevitably it's going to be a mess because yeah, there's just... The t I do not envy the team at all. Like that, what in their their position, I guess, is just knowing they have to somehow balance something where it is worth doing, but it's not worth doing. Like that is literally what they have to they have to plug in prayers that are worth doing, but also not worth using. Basically, yeah. because if yeah. it's always worth using, then it's like, oh my god, now it's a chore. But it's got to be worth using. But it can't i don't know it's just a fucking mess it's and definitely tough they need to just do some like community consult and get a thousand ideas for the prayers and run through those because like some of these are genuinely cool like i like the idea of uh you know lowering your max hit raising your minimum hit kind of bringing every weapon to a fang level that's interesting yeah. sometimes it'd yeah. be worth it maybe sometimes it's not and then like maybe the idea of you know po poison actually benefiting you that's a cool idea but mm -hmm. i think the convoluted ones where you have to think any further though than like this happens then this happens it's just too much for a game like this especially if you're expected to coordinate with other players i like the i wish they'd do more stuff like the red Karis in toa where you get to uh, buff Ooh. other people's damage yeah, yeah i think yeah. stuff like that could be fun yeah so like team based i feel like there is so much room for like the kind of team based prayers yeah, absolutely. It could be something like, but it needs to be like an overhead so everyone can see it. I don't, I don't want to have to be screaming at each other in a Discord call the whole time. I think that's the beauty of RuneScape is you can get in a call with your friends and run a raid and just you know talk about any random shit that comes to mind. You don't have to sit there sweating. You know, the warden's about to pop his whatever attack in ten seconds. Everybody, put on your shield and cast this. You know, mm -hmm. there's none of that. It's just okay. We all attack the boss and have a good time. Yeah, it's really tough i wonder what they're gonna do like my my ideas like i've had ideas for like a, a year or two just kind of talking about like just it, it has nothing really to do with god alignments i actually thought i thought the god alignments were a good thing but again this is not actually knowing what the prayers are going to do it's a great fantasy to have but until you actually see what they're proposing there's like oh shit like this isn't gonna this yeah isn't, this isn't good um but I don't know. I just thought like something like, okay, what if we had like a defensive prayer that's super, super tanky prayer. If it's like a, you know, it's like a, it's like a piety that, that obviously has to be exclusive. So it's a super strong defense prayer. And then we have one that's super, super strong accuracy prayer. And then we have one that's like, I don't know, like some sort of recoil prayer or something. I know that's like very overly simplistic, but it's something where like, we do have, because uh, what, what I think Augury is like level 77, like we still have space for new prayers. We have like six more spaces for prayers and we could just have something simple. I think the, the pros of the God alignments is that you do have some diversity. The problem is as soon as you start adding like this diversity and like these special effects that can only be done on certain things, it does inevitably become convoluted. Yeah, it's like, and especially you have to, with seven sets. Oh my God, I know. It's just going to be so... That's gonna be so hard to balance over time. Yeah, it's just like I don't know, and, and I don't know what the way to go about it is. My obviously, like what I was just saying, like maybe just add some good prayers that are super super simple that will have use. I mean, if we had an accuracy prayer, you would always use that for your spec weapons, and that'd be mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Yeah, I like stuff like that yeah. where it's kind of maybe it's niche use, or maybe you use it all the time with specific weapons. I think that kind of stuff would be. You know, easy to understand, fun to use, pretty much. Yeah, it's just, it's tough. And, and then the other thing is, like, do we even need it? Like, do we even need new prayers at all? Because that's, uh, you know, I've been hearing the argument of that. Like, we we got to, at some point, like, kind of draw a line in the, sa a line in the sand and be like, okay, like, maybe don't overcomplicate things too much. 
But then again, we also always need progression in this game. We need some sort of like, I don't know. It's just, it's just hard because you want to keep old school kind of old school and make it simplistic and point and clicky. But it's just like, uh, I feel like, yeah, like there's totally room in the prayer book for some new stuff. But yeah, it's a hard, it's a balancing act, really. You know, I like the idea of gaining defense while you're standing still. Something like that could be fun. But I just don't think there's any content in the game that really complements something like that right now. Mm -hmm. You know, like if they release the prayer book alongside. I don't know, a new boss or a new raid where these kind of things are used in it. And they give you the idea of like, oh, in the future, these will be more useful. That could be fun. But there's too many things at once that yeah. kind of just don't have a place or they're so confusing that I don't even want to try to understand it. Yeah. Did you get to look at all at the what they're proposing for Project Rebalance that was uploaded this morning? Oh, yeah, I read that today. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to be making a ramble of it later tonight. But like, a, just, what is there anything that stuck out to you? Because I, I did glance over the whole thing just briefly, but like. Yeah, well, I own a foot pedal, so I would love for Zars to be 350,000 <laughs> XP per hour. <laughs> I did see that Reddit post where it was like some guy was talking about foot pedaling, just so many negative. I mean, when I hear foot pedaling, I think of like just giga sweat nerd. But it is funny because there actually are quite a few people that foot pedal thieving just on a oh, I was being computer serious. entirely I've, I've got a foot pedal i have 48 million thieving <laughs> xp on my Holy arm shore. okay wait, wait so is that is that done on a separate pc no i only do it when i'm just like if i'm playing a ga another game or something like that i see on like my xbox or something like that i'll just foot pedal see, thieving I if i want to and it's like you don't have to pay attention in the slightest yeah no i mean it's kind of fun it, that's actually crazy because whenever I've heard of foot pedaling, I, the only time I ever think of foot pedaling is like the 200 mil. Like people going for 200 mil, yeah. mil, like they're the people that are getting foot pedals and shit. I've thought about it, but I'm like, am I really going to buy another computer just to get my thieving XP up? That's probably not a worthy investment. Uh, that is so awesome. I mean, has your calf grown from that? Like there's surely like you got some like extra muscles growing on in one foot. You know, yeah, I think they must have because at first it would kind of burn after doing it for a bit, but there have been times where I do it for like five hours straight and I don't feel anything anymore. Oh my God. I should probably switch up the leg I used for that. Yeah, actually. I'm going to start yeah. looking weird. Yeah. I, I, I played the drums in uh, seventh grade. It was like this rock and roll workshop. That was, that's what the class was called. It's like a, just one semester of playing the drums. Nice, and yeah. Jesus Christ, when you're first using that foot pedal, like your leg gets <laughs> numb from just yeah. how like the, the muscles you're using are just not normal. And oh, I bet. Oh, my God. Yeah, I remember just the pain. I just like come back from class. I'm like, geez, man, like, <laughs> fuck, I can't even walk. Did yeah. you eventually get used to it though? And you could no, I didn't because I was only no. there for a semester. <laughs> so like right. the whole, oh, okay. I was getting used to it, and then I stopped entirely. And now it's like, oh, if I ever went back, it's gonna hurt. Well, actually, I got um, not Rock Band, but uh, I don't know if you played Guitar Hero World Tour. The drum, oh god, I played drum so much Guitar Hero. That'd be a whole other topic to get into. Yeah, bro, I was disgusting <laughs> at that game. I fucking <laughs> dominated that game. But the drums, I sucked ass at. And the, the biggest oh, reason yeah. I sucked is because that fucking foot pedal was just so it's hard it it's hurt, hard getting first the of all down yeah and it was so it was so difficult you're right it was really difficult it's just like so different than playing guitar yeah it was it was rough plus the drum set like inevitably broke like oh yeah. something would break like one of the pads wouldn't horrible. register it was bad yeah they're horrible i've tried to find one because i you know i get nostalgic when i go back and play rock band and guitar hero but those drum sets are like 200 dollars minimum nowadays <laughs> they just don't exist anymore yeah, that's ridiculous. and they're probably all half broken. So <laughs> we had we had Guitar Hero World Tour, and um, there was also singing. That was such a shit show. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> people were just it people were literally just like yelling into it, and just trying to match their little meter up with where the meter's supposed to be. It's yeah, like, nobody's actually singing. Just hum, you know, just yeah. hum into it. It worked way better. Yeah, no, it did. You'd always find oh, like, yeah. little ways to go about that. Mm -hmm. those were the days though i loved that so, so much fun. that era of gaming was just so fun it was perfect man <laughs> and and we used to play like mario party a bunch oh yeah and any sort of like we uh, we sports was goaded i mean that i loved we so i don't know if you had a Wii. yeah that's my most embarrassing thing as i've never like played a bunch of wii games that's like the one console i never played I, somehow I, I was low-key kind of sad that 
we got a Wii for Christmas rather than like an Xbox 360 or PS3 back in that era because yeah. the PS3 and the Xbox 360 were way cooler. A Wii, it's like, dude, this is a children's system. Like, nobody wants <laughs> this garbage, but I inevitably just really enjoyed the hell out of it. So. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was a whole different experience back then, you know? Yeah. It was I all mean, about Call of Duty and Halo. Yeah. I would, I played a lot of Call of Duty. I'd, it sucks that you didn't play Wii Sports though, because man, like I, I would, I, I would come back from school, just l- launch my backpack into the <laughs> fucking like where wherever in the shoes, just run, literally running home. I just swing my backpack in and just instantly on the Wii, and I would, <laughs> I would do the fucking Wii tennis drills for like four yeah. hours straight. Wow, that sounds like, fun though. It dude, does sound fun. The tennis drills were so fun, so fucking fun. You just got to get like that wrist slap going because you're yeah. never actually swinging. You're just trying to get that perfect timing of a little wrist flicks. That sounds great. I mean, it's probably better. It was probably better for your mental development than like, you know, I was like 12 coming home from school, getting called slurs by grown men on Call of Duty or whatever. So <laughs> that probably yeah. did some damage. You know, you grew- <laughs> totally. No, no, totally. It did. Uh, yeah. I my My dad was like really against shh. Any game where you kill the people until I turned like 13. Mm. And then he kind of like, we, we kind of had to like hide it because he never actually like had a transition of him saying like, it's okay. But he also just stopped caring as much. Right. So we, we, I would have to like hide whenever I was playing Call of Duty. <laughs> like I'd have to hide it and like he'd come in and I'd like pause the game and just wait till he leaves. And like clearly he sees that I'm playing Call of Duty and he just wouldn't say anything. He just kind of stand there awkwardly make it known that like he knows that i know that he knows and it's just this fucking awkward thing but was, oh yeah 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 my parents knew that i would i'm sure they could hear me oh my god and i was like 13 or something just like yelling <laughs> when you die or something complain about oh i'm lagging you know you weren't lagging it was just embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> Dude, were your parents like um thinking that like you were like gonna start killing people in real life because you no. know <laughs> No, they never Dude. thought that. They knew. They knew. Okay, I played video games since I was like three years old or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. They knew it was just for fun. Okay, that's good because there was a bro. Like I went over to my friend's house and they were like super, super like religious, you mm-hmm. know. And so when they heard, like, they literally thought video games were gonna make people like turn into like mass murderers and stuff. Like they <laughs> yeah. actually, like, unironically thought that. I feel like we all know somebody whose parents thought that. Yeah. Yeah. It was. The, the best time ever in that season of gaming, though, was like going over to your friends' houses for sleepovers and like oh, gaming yes. all night. Oh my gosh, it was the best. Me and my friend Justin, shout out to Justin, we would spend like a week or two at each other's houses straight during the summer and oh. just be complete degenerates, stay up all night, sleep till like 4 p.m. Oh, it was the best. Bro, the, he, we just we didn't understand what we had, you know? Actually, I know. I, like, I think, actually, there were moments where I did understand what I had. Yeah, but I, you just thought it would go on forever, you know? I know, I know. That's you're, just how it would always be. You're totally right. Dude, I remember going over to my friend's house and playing Age of Empires fucking 1 oh. on, his, on his PC. And we'd play that shit, like, nonstop. And this is back when, like, Age of Empires 1 was so weird because, like, compared to 2 and 3, like, you could... There were upgrades to your normal villagers that could become super powerful and, like, super fast. And this is, like, on the normal game. This isn't even with cheats or anything. Like, just straight up, you could have your villagers run at, like, 4x speed and just (laughs) demolish buildings. And the buildings were all, like, scaled way down. You know what I mean? So, it's like your wonders are only, like, a 5 by 5 thing and your villagers are (laughs) one by ones. (laughs) And you're just running over (laughs) Bro, that we would have we actually. had so much fun playing Age of Empires one. Oh my god, that is great. I only played two in college when my uh, when my friend in college got me into it, but I could never get super into Age of Empires. <sighs> I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Like I, I was never <laughs> super into it anyway, but. <laughs> just at my friend's house, we'd just go hard on that shit. Yeah, it was so much easier to just like pick something up and get so into it when you're with your buddies. Dude, or you was. bring like you bring your Xbox over and you're all playing like co-op or online together, but you're all just sitting in the same room. Dude, I loved that. Did you ever have a GameCube? Oh yeah. Did you play like the GameCube. Did you play like um, Nightfire or any of the 007s? Oh, I didn't play any 007s on GameCube, but oh, I played man. like GoldenEye and stuff. Okay. Yeah, that was. Oh, did you ever play Midway Sports games? 
like the, I can't the midways remember. are like the it's the ones where like whenever there was like a loading screen just spam your controller and you could like enter like cheat codes of like turning your dude into like a horse or like a snowman it, that sounds really familiar but i Bro, don't remember exactly oh my god i went <laughs> so hard on those games like there was this game nfl Bl or nfl or nhl hits it was the hockey yeah. one and bro, you would just spam your controller right before every single game and you would just get like all these random cheat codes. It's just like that was the whole thing. It's like just spam your... I mean, you could find the cheat codes online, but if you spammed your controller enough, you'd just get random cheat codes. That sounds and, amazing. And we would just slam each other through the glass, like just repeatedly. And you guys would get on <laughs> fire and so you'd have like turbo going and you're just slamming everybody. But like that was gaming, dude. Yes. We're missing a lot of that nowadays. God damn. We need a bunch of options in the menu. Giant heads. You know, you just explode yes. when you die. I miss that. Yes. Just random bullshit. You never know yes. what's going to happen. Or don't tell your friends you turn stuff on. Yes. <laughs> You've never played the game before? Yes, dude. Oh, that's the best. Holy shit. Do we play? Okay, I'm sorry. This is one more story. We'll, we'll move All on right. to some topics for those listening. I swear to God, we will. Um, <laughs> like, Veru, NHL hits was definitely... I, I loved... I loved all the ones. I, I loved MLB as well. Like the slugfest went crazy, but NHL in particular, my friend and I, we went, we decided to do the franchise, the franchise mode where you just like go through the whole, like, what was it called? Was it franchise? Was that it? Or something like that. It was, um, some sort of mode you go through where you have to like play every single team. And we went okay, on yeah. super, super hard difficulty. Mm. And it was actually super, super hard. Like, because, what the NPCs had was just laser focus into the goals. Like they, they were just like unstoppable basically. So yeah. the only way to win was to actually like outsmart them, which was like passing a lot and like breaking away from them and stuff. It was crazy, but, and just slamming them. You had to slam them like repeatedly <laughs> and, and like midway through the fight, you would get into like these brawls where it's just like, it would show a scene of you like punching the guy and you'd have to like punch them and you'd beat, beat the crap out of them. And, like we went through the whole season and we tr we went undefeated and every time we'd lost we just restarted it and it, i swear over like one summer we spent like i'm not even kidding probably like a hundred hours playing this game just beating every single team repeatedly and uh, bro there was no better gaming moment than that like truly yeah you probably loved every second of it God. that sounds amazing damn yeah that was good times okay um Let's get into some of these Twitter topics because I am uh, pretty interested in some of these. So Lone Jim Rat says, been watching you for a long time and always was an OG fan. Keep up the good work. His... I hate that guy, but yeah. Guy. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I love you, Jim Rat. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been subscribed to him forever, I swear. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Just wanted to scare him a little yeah. bit. I know he's listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's laughing right now. Okay, number mm -hmm. number one, how have you seen YouTube clogging genre evolve over the years since you were involved since the very beginning? Um, yeah, I guess we'll cover that one. The YouTube okay. clogging genre. I just got to start off with a small tangent. Man, I hate the word clog. Why does everyone say clog and clogging? It just sounds so bad. You know, tell people, oh, what do you do on RuneScape? Oh, yeah, I clog. I clog. Man, I'm just clogging oh, all my over God. the place. <laughs> Can't say that one in public. I can tell people I play RuneScape. I can't tell them that I clog. Uh, but yeah, this is how's the scene changed. I mean, there was like no scene when I started. I thought, honestly, I made the first video for my collection log series. And I was like, this is going to bomb. Who the fuck wants to watch me fill in boss log slots at, you know, Krill or whatever. Nobody's going to care about this. But mm -hmm. people were interested, actually, surprisingly. So it's changed a lot. I mean, I remember back in the day, people would message me and they'd be like, hey, is it OK if I start my own collection log series? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, dude, you do whatever you want. You know, you don't need permission from me or whatever. But it's really cool to see how it's become like a main way of playing the game. You know, I like that. Bro, you should have game kept people. Yes, I should have been the <laughs> only one. Anytime a new series comes out that's collection log related, send my fans on. You everybody go fuck Bodie up. How dare he fill in a collection log slot and make a video about it? Oh <laughs> Scumbag. <my God. laughs> yeah, no, it, it does seem like kind of like a daunting series to even start. Um, and, you know, you don't really know the audience engagement level, but... Yeah, no, yeah, I was still kind of a noob back then too. I had just finished maxing my account. I had like a 300 mil bank. So how many clogs were you at? And then how many are you at now? 
oh like right at the start i think i made the start made the video like the week the update came out and i had like 300 retroactively filled slots or something like that and now i'm at let me look real quick so i actually don't know i just got a bunch of slots recently spoilers sorry uh i'm at 1289 now Sheesh, almost okay. almost at 1300 okay that's pretty pre so you're like almost 200 away total or yep. completing it yeah scary um, thumb. yeah no i mean but then it's just like this exponential curve like as soon as you yeah hit. So uh, is it Basilius? Is he rank one? Uh, who, is it Marnie or Basilius? I feel like they're been like head head to head. I think it's Marnie right now, just because these that they are so disgustingly lucky. I don't actually know Marnie personally. I don't know yeah. if it's, but yeah, they're insanely lucky. So I don't think anybody's going to catch up to them for the next like three years or something. Yeah, I mean, his his third age luck is just out of control i mean like how many third age slots does marnie even have i've never really taken a look is that two, three four five six eight eight pieces yeah and, and, one of, and then a ninth dupe of third age shooting. yeah and it's like it's the good pieces of third age it's yeah. like the stuff that's the super rare stuff because you could just spam hard clues and get all that like hard clue third age but he's got right, like the master exactly. stuff and elite stuff so yeah, and it's going to be cool to see in like a year or two when Marnie gets another collection log slot. It'll be pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> After, you yeah. know, 3,000 hours of going for it, yeah. Legit, legit. <laughs> do, do you think that like stackable clues are coming into the game pretty soon? I feel like with the recent thing where they made it so you can drop them for up to an hour, I think that's kind of their compromise with it. I don't think they're going to pull it again because they kind of haven't been replying to it. You know, usually they'll re I'll see Mod Ash or other devs reply to the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life on Twitter where somebody will be like, hey, is there any way we could, you know, bring back 1 million XP per hour combat training AFK? I think I need that. And they'll just be like, no. But at the, I see tons of tweets. Can we do stackable clues? clues? But they never respond to that. So They used to respond to them. I, I, I remember seeing like old Ash tweets kind of responded to them mm -hmm. the kind of meme format but like yeah they they always did seem kind of against it like yeah it, I, th I think they are it's interesting they pulled it one time and then it failed and i think they just laid it to rest since then uh have you done any clues since that update of being able to drop them for an hour yeah, I haven't dropped any of them for it. I've been trying to get a good master three step to do the mm. dropping. It's so much nicer for that though. Pro, it's so OP. Yeah, it's great. You could do a TOA, get your elite clue, drop it on the ground and go send another. Yeah. I think <laughs> I think that's why uh, I don't know. Like I don't really know where I fall in in this like sort of like stackable clue category cuz some people like desperately want stackable clues. And they want them to be like the stackable clues that are from leagues, like the stuff where you just have this endless yeah. scroll that just stacks and maybe up to five, maybe up to 10. Some people are just saying, just fucking send it and make it unlimited. Um, I don't really know. And I, I did have the suggestion that like, what if it wasn't stacked? Well, maybe you could just hold as many clues as you want. The problem is, is there are problems with that system. Like there are like, I'm not going to go into all of them, but basically like there there's unique IDs to clues. And yeah. if you were able to just pick up as many clues as you want, what you optimally like the, and this is some, somebody mentioned this in a YouTube comment of mine, dude. So if you have like enough bank space, what you would do is just repeatedly grab every single hard clue, throw it into your bank. And then as soon as you get like 27 of the same clue type, you just bring all 27 of them with you with a spade and dig ones and just like get all 27 of them to like upgrade. That's not terrible. Yeah, like that That sounds ridiculous. And that's exactly yeah. what people would do. You know that's what people oh, would do. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. So they would have to like completely recode how clues work where they're not based on IDs. So, or like every single one has to have a unique ID. And there's yeah. no way of like, I don't know, it would, it would just be a mess. It's a huge hassle, and anyone who's played this game for more than like a year knows that every time they try to update any system, even something simple, it breaks like five other things, and they yep. can't catch it all. So you get yep. a twisted bow spawning outside the farming guild or something <laughs> crazy like that, and then the game's down for two days. <laughs> you know? so like revamping all of clues would be such a disaster. It it would be bad. It's just I just feel like right now what we have like the system of dropping clues for an hour it just feels clunky and like honestly kind of private servery like it feels weird 
I get that. I feel like it is probably the most fair compromise, though, because people are already doing clue juggling and people have been begging for the stackable. So this one, you at least have to put in some effort to keep them going. But yeah, and you can't stack like an infinite amount of them. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's fair. But yeah, I get what you mean. You know, seeing 50 clue scrolls on the ground does seem uh, pretty silly looking. Yeah, I think it's just a little bit obnoxious. It's just like it's fine for right now. I just don't feel like this is the end goal. Like it shouldn't be either. I feel like we're at yeah. this like median median where it's like okay, we we got to find out some solution. Are we going to allow us to just pick up additional like I don't know. It's just... I think stacking up to like 5 is probably fine cuz then then it solves the fact that a lot of people don't want to, you know, they just start a barrage task and they don't want to leave their neck reels mm -hmm. just cuz they got a clue. But if you could stack up to 5, you're probably not going to get more than 5 clues from it. So there you go. Yeah. You got your 5. But then I also think it's one of those things where most people aren't actually going to like having it because they already let that hard clue sit in their bank for 2 weeks. You know who you are. Your clue's been sitting there. <laughs> For weeks you haven't been doing it. You think you're gonna do it because there's five of them? You're not. <laughs> Dude, imagine they imagine they did this. Imagine they like made it so when you get a duplicate hard clue, what it does is it just adds additional steps to the clue you already have. Oh so, like, that's interesting. You get one from Hellhounds, pick it up, you pick up another one. It doesn't it just attaches to your clue. <laughs> And so you didn't, you now just have this clue after picking up like, you know, seven different hard clues. You now have like this 35 stepper that you solve. Which is multiplied rewards. And, and, and what happens is as soon as you fully solved it, then you just get the seven caskets stacked. Like, boom. Oh there you go. Oh my gosh. That, that would be satisfying. But like, oh my God. You're sitting there calculating awesome. how many steps you have left to do. God, how many clues did I pick up on this thing? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Bro, that's actually kind of cool. Like, I'm, I'm not even like kind of trolling right now like that would i mean that would be so different to how clues are but yeah. bro, if you could just stack up to like 100 steps or something it's then... goofy but getting like 100 hard clues at <sighs> once would be pretty satisfying Ooh, that would be so juicy dude and then it's kind of a risk too well i guess not a risk now that you could drop them for an hour but <sighs> that'd be fun that would be fun. I agree. Sitting there for four hours straight on stream, just doing the stuff. Bro, that anything. would be awesome. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I'm actually. I'm kind. Of, I'm kind of down for that. We, there's probably some horrible downsides. Whenever I, whenever there's like probably. cool ideas, there's always downsides. This, this is how complicated this game can be. You could yeah. just make it really like overly convoluted like some things in RS3 where it'll be like when you do the clue steps, every five steps you get a token that you can turn in to get the casket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it starts feeling a little bit like that when you add too much to it, but I, I like the idea. You can make it longer to get more caskets at once. That could be fun. That would be. That would be cool. Maybe I'd... a downside to where it could add like more steps or like it leans towards the maximum amount of steps more often to encourage you not to, I guess, but... Ooh, yeah. Yeah, no yeah no it would, it would be tough i almost feel like it, that's not even necessary it what they would have to just do is just make it so it's the like the median amount or just always make oh, okay, it so yeah. it's really hard it's just always five I yeah mean, it's, it would balance out regardless but i feel like that's just the simplest way to go about it it's like just yeah probably here, here's and then you'll get the steps. guys on reddit i'm 58 steps into my elite and i don't want to play the game anymore what do i do <laughs> <laughs> they they just never done elite clues. They got their account to max. They just been picking them up over the years. The, the worst thing ever would be like somebody somebody just has this like one like elite clue step that has like you know three hundred steps on it now because they just haven't <laughs> solved it. And they they literally just can't do this one step. They realize so they have to drop it. <laughs> Like, oh yeah that would that would suck. You're an Iron Man on your yeah. like eighty step master clue. You get the Brio staff. You just stuck. That's that's where you should be able to like skip over. Okay, because if we were to implement a system like this, you'd have to have some way of skipping. And that skipping would have to entail like, okay, you want to skip this? You now have to delete 10 steps from your clue. Oh god. In order to skip this next step. So you've basically just wasted two caskets, but at least you and can continue on. Then you just get the step back to back again. Yeah, yeah, that would be horrible. <laughs> that, would be dreadful. that sounds rough, yeah. But at least that would be fair, um, you know, if you wanted to go down this route of just endlessly stacking up your steps. You yeah, know. you could do that. That would be so interesting. That would be, like, honestly, I'm just thinking of it right now. Just having, like, an endless kind of s s clue you're doing and then just stacking up this massive stack of caskets at the end would be so fun. That would be pretty fun, actually. It would, it would allow people to also just spam click open imp links for, like, five hours straight to stack up the most oh, disgustingly I long know. clue scroll. 
you're right, but the we Maine's <laughs> already have enjoyed stack. That, oh yeah, Maine's pretty much already have stackable clues. Yeah, we have viable and stackable clues of every tier, so it's just like whatever. And now, and now with uh, the dropping for an hour, like I've seen a lot of people like on main accounts doing medium clues, and mm-hmm. you know they'll they'll have their setup really nice, and then they'll go to their bank, you know, withdraw ten eclectics or whatever spam open up. Nowadays, what you do is with the hour dropping, you just go open up like you know a, a thousand eclectics drop 40 clues on the ground and then you're just with your medium set up perfectly and as soon as you solved one you just pick up the next one right next to the bank so you literally just drop 40 medium clues right next yeah. to the bank and that's how you now do your clues it's it's a lot more efficient yeah that does sound nice to not have to rebank every clue yeah that's that sounds yeah, it sounds nice. It's I mean, kind of could, insane, but I love it. Yeah, no, it's, it's and the thing is, like, this game is progressing. Like, it's just like we can't can't stagnate entirely. We do have to find a balance of things. You know, we we can't just. I don't know. It's it's just it's tough. There's so many communities that you have to like worry about. You don't want to like upset some of the, you know, kind of nostalgia from this game that we've had. But ultimately, like, what is I think the biggest thing to consider is fun. Like yeah, that, that I should agree. be the biggest factor in, in regards to updates and stuff. And I, I don't know, I think this could be good, but that's kind of my focus with it. That's why I feel like I've enjoyed a lot of updates that people are kind of like middling on, or they thought were not that great. But I just think if it's just, if it's fun and it doesn't really hurt anything in the game, I think it's great. A lot of people go, why do we even need to have this boss? It doesn't have any new best in slot drops. And I'm just like, Dude, I'm having fun. I'm smacking a rat in the face with my scythe. Like, <laughs> this is a great time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's a great way. That, and that that will ultimately have you as the player having a lot more enjoyable of a time playing this game when you just aren't thinking of all the negative things and stuff. Like, if you just just focus on the fun you're having. To, try not yeah. to think of like, oh, like the do it's so easy to like kind of like be a doomer occasionally and just like oh mm-hmm. this game's going down the rs3 path or whatever it's like just just enjoy what you got i guess yeah like i love uh hallowed sepulcher i think it's like probably the best scaling update this game's ever gotten but when you start thinking because i've gone i went double dry for my ring of endurance and if i sat there thinking about the drop rate i never would have wanted to do it but doing it even if i'm dry i just love it i just think it's so fun mm-hmm. and so if you can get out of that old school runescape mindset where we're all sitting there plugging in our numbers to the dry calculator and thinking about the most efficient way to do it i think most of the stuff they've added over the years is pretty damn fun honestly to do yeah they've succeeded there for the most part okay second question from lone gym rat is if you had the power to implement any new update in the game what would it be that's a good question that is a good question and one that I uh, probably should have come up with an answer beforehand. Um, <laughs> dang, okay, let's circle back to that one. I need some time okay. to think about that a little bit. Yeah, that one's... That's deep. It is deep. <clears throat> it's it's just... Uh, yeah, because there's just so many elements. Like, there's so many things I would want in this game and it's just like, it's hard. It would be hard to just yeah. pick one anyway. I think, I think like a year ago, I would have said uh, God Wars Dungeon 2 from RuneScape 3, but Desert Treasure 2 was kind of like that. We got four mm. new bosses and so I think I'm comfortable with that kind of being our God Wars 2, basically. What are your thoughts on like a completionist cape? I love the idea of a comp cape. I think they need to make it so it's not too easy to get because a lot of the completionist stuff in old school is not really too difficult, but I don't want it to be stupid like the trim cape in RS3 where you have to commit like a full year just to getting the trim cape. But I, I don't want the main list to just be like, get 99 in every skill, you know, fill in random collection log slots. I want it to be like satisfying to do and not mm. just the main grinds you do. It needs to be an offshoot, like new content that n- nobody does, you know. It's kind of hard though because one of the downsides with the completion escape in my opinion is like the upkeep of it and it's not just the up it's not just the the doing the upkeeping of it it's like the the problems that come with an upkeep thing so for example like if you if people start getting their comp capes and then they're pulling another update like hey we want to come out with this fun update but oh yeah by the way you're going to need to do it if you want to maintain your comp cape then people are going to have this super big incentive to just vote no where you could be having great updates come into the game but now everyone's obsessed with their cape not being taken away from them and it's just like uh 
I could definitely see that being a problem. Like in RuneScape 3, like I used to play that game and make videos on it as well. And people would mm -hmm. definitely complain when an update would come out that wasn't really the most fun or engaging for them. And they still had to grind yeah. the whole thing out to keep the comp cape. So it's tough. I see the positives and negatives. I mean, they could just do combat task version of it. You know, you need X amount of points, like a percentage of the points to get the regular cape. And then the trim is 100% of yeah. the tasks. Yeah. I think that would solve the upkeep problems you wouldn't even lose your comp cape every update as long as you weren't skimming right at the percentage line yeah w would you I think that'd be fine honestly would you want it to have like perks like what would the perks be mm, well and is it, is it yeah. a max it's a max cape right but it's like a enhanced. give it a max cape with a little oomph i guess yeah i don't really know what perks you could add but mm. something a little extra could be fun maybe just enhance some of the effects of the max cape oh no the holy wrench gives you two extra prayer per potion or something uh, stuff like that i feel like people would care enough to go for it but mm -hmm. it's not so busted that people feel like they have to go for it that's fair that's where i'd like it to be all right uh potato said or says let's go and then asks if you were to create a new account what type would it be well, everyone wants me to make an ultimate iron man really badly God. it's been like years and years of people just begging for me to play an ultimate iron man and potato plays an ultimate iron man mm -hmm. i don't know what's wrong with her what happened but yeah, I don't i'm know. sorry about that um <laughs> so i don't know if i could create a new account i've always wanted to do like a crazy weird challenge account like a chunk account of some kind but it just gets to the point where it's so convoluted i'm sitting there thinking up an idea and I'm trying to do something unique and it's like man i feel like there's already so many people with so many different series i don't even know where to start with an idea but if I made a new account, it'd probably be either a group Iron Man with a bunch of people doing some unique way of playing it, or I guess an ultimate Iron Man because I've given up all hope in my life. Dude, UIM just sounds so miserable unless it's some giga snowflake. Like, yeah. Seeing people trying to like maneuver shit in their bag and out of their bag and having to do a wilderness clue step and having to rebag for 15 minutes. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, that is yeah you've just you know sucked what? out all the fun from this right i take back my answer if they ever make hardcore ultimate iron man mode i would play that yes where you don't have the fucking bag or diet yes. or any bullshit i want to be like do i want to keep this masori top or do yes. i want to get a shadow you know shit like that i like that yeah i totally and it gets rid of the annoyances of the bagging stuff yeah hardcore ultimate iron man jagex please hardcore ultimate and these are the caveats. This is what I have suggested in the past. You you cannot own a home and you can't build Ooh. stash units. Ooh, so, so you, you literally first can't hold can't, anything. Or never mind. You could do mahogany homes for construction. Never mind. Yeah. I kind of like, like that. You could train construction. You could get it to 99, but you can't build stash units and you can't build a POH. So you can't own a home. That me and the biggest reasons for that is I don't want I don't want there to be any banks. I don't want you to be able to hold uh, store anything anywhere ever. Right. You want to be an actual like hermit moving across the land with yes. a crusty beard who's never seen like another person in their life. Exactly. Just m rampantly murdering everything they see. Exactly. I like that. That that's what I want. And I want you to not be able to pick up a looting bag. Like you you physically just yes. cannot hold one. I like that a lot. I I think that with stash units they should let you store stuff in it. But no, 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 like no, you no. just no, come on, don't make me no, have to. No, oh, you, cool. You I got an easy clue. Got to go buy some gnome robes. Exactly. That, that is that, that is bad. that is the hardcoreness of it. <laughs> just you, you are going to suffer. Like hardcore it, ultimate high scores. Yeah. Yo, I just got rank one. I did my sixth easy clue. Oh, like two e years even into better. The game e even better. You can't talk to NPCs. <laughs> no quests that's just over <laughs> no i'm kidding no no but there would have to be uh, what i want is like the ultimate just the ultimate masochistic mode where like yes you could still you still do all the quests if you wanted to it would be the worst thing ever just yeah uh, but but one thing i don't want is like i don't want you to well actually no i take it back I, i'm just thinking i've never played a uim but is I feel like the quality of life of that herb lord guy that like decants your potions actually is mm, a nice yeah. thing and that that could be still fine for hardcore ultimate yeah right? you could keep the little things like yeah because without that it's it's really rough <laughs> yeah, it is. god i remember back in the day before they added that seeing uim's inventories it was disgusting bro do you remember like i i think back to what when was this was this 20 i want to say it was 20 
15 no no wait no surely it was it was 2016 i believe 2016 is when lowlander maxes uim for oh summer. yes mm -hmm. bro he maxed a uim before there was any sort of like real quality of life yeah there was nothing it was like it was seen as an insane challenge back then like you were mad for even thinking about doing it god damn yeah they really need hard and and the, the hardcore ultimate would also it just deletes your account on death i'm okay with that i'm okay because like it doesn't even matter <laughs> i know it's like you're gonna find regular ultimate after that like you're just yeah right yeah <laughs> you don't have any stash you don't have any poh <laughs> You've got what? Oh, I've got some fucking god dehyde. I got to keep playing this account. Like, <laughs> You've already lost all your shit because you died anyway. So it's just like yes, oh. I love that. Yeah, just de de delete it, and you're you're not even crossed off the high scores. You're just removed from the high scores. So you're just <laughs> gone, dude. Like, <laughs> get out of here. That's just gonna make people play even more scared than like I do on my hardcore. So yeah. I like that a lot, though. I, I thought, yeah, got They got to come up with something for membership, though, because then there's gonna they be do. people complaining. I bought two years of membership in advance for the account died a week. Oh my gosh! Transfer or, 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 or they could do the thing. Like I remember them suggesting. There was some players that were suggesting like hardcore, like original hardcore Iron Man. When you die, your account's just reset to Lumbridge level three stats, Ooh. cleared bank, everything. So you still get to keep the membership, but you're just you know you're just you've lost everything you're like here you go here's your account still like you're not That's locked out of it you're yeah. just reset a lot less people would have played hardcore if that was a thing because oh, okay. be i know horrible. so many like you just find someone in game you'll see like a maxed iron max gear 99 everything you're like oh wow nice account and you look them up on the hardcore high scores <laughs> like 20 base stats they <laughs> died to a guard or something <laughs> <laughs> but now they're like this sick account they would have they would have never even thought about playing hardcore yeah if no, I mean, it, if you look at my account, uh, Sebe, and then were uh, you a hardcore? Yeah, I was a hardcore. Oh, I gotta see this. Is it one word or two? It's two words. S two words. Okay, S A E space. B -A -E. Ooh, very nice. Seventy three combat when you died. Yeah. Is that on purpose? No, uh, it's well, the total level is thirteen sixty nine too. Was that on purpose? Nice. Oh wow. Yeah. I feel like it was kind of destiny. And now I click, and you know, you max everything. Thirteen thousand clues, one point six bill XP. Yeah. Would you have played hardcore back then, or would, the, would you have quit the game if you had a hardcore and you got to reset? To oh, level if you just re the thing is, is like, uh, I don't know if you know the history. Like, I played a hardcore. I actually, my my original hardcore is Sader, S A E D E R. You can actually look that okay. up. It's still, yeah, it's, it's still a hardcore too. Um, okay. That account I played. It was like rank thirty nine or something overall. This is like three or four months into the game mode. Yeah. And then it got banned because I auto-clicked Alks. This is, <laughs> this is before I was ever a streamer or anything. I was just in college. Like yeah. Just, my friend was like, yeah, bro, just like auto-click Alks. Like I I've done it on four different accounts. Like you're good, bro. Like you're not going to get caught. If I'm going to get caught the next day. Um, oh, we all had friends like that. I swear. I, like, I, yeah, I bought it all my accounts up. I never yeah. even got banned like, once. Like, yeah, you're the good, bro. Like, they'll it. never catch you. Yeah, just, like, you're the goody two-shoes. Your heart's racing, setting up the program. <laughs> and then you're banned in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> literally that's how dude. it goes literally oh, i've got a great story about when i got banned when i was nine years old let's hear it so i was i was really into wood cutting as a kid and mm. so i had like level 90 wood cutting when i was like nine years old and i was chopping magic trees that's how i'd make all my money and so there's this dude chatting with me and he's like yeah my main account is zezima i'm like yeah you're full of it you know so i said okay <laughs> Then tell me what's the first letter of your password. <laughs> he reported me for password scamming, and I got banned. <laughs> I was so upset. I was hard. I was like in tears, oh writing my, my reply to the Jagex moderators oh in the band. I'm like, I wasn't trying to ask for his password. <laughs> dude they oh, they showed man. no mercy back then. no was, they didn't if, if you if you said anything that was crossing any line, you're just out of there. Like you're gone, yeah. bro. It was a permanent ban, too. It didn't say, like, seven Jesus days. It was permanent Christ. until I uh, replied to it, and then they unbanned me, like, two days later. Okay, that's good. They, they actually yeah. had, like, a moderation team. Like, they actually had humans reading those things, I swear to God. Yeah, now you just get a response that says, he... <laughs> He's literally... <laughs> permanent literally. Ban forever. <laughs> literally. So bad. Oh, Fucking man. he. That was just that was so <laughs> goaded. Or and the and, and the plea the, you know the plea, the plea, right? yes. <laughs> plea. oh my god oh there's so much we would miss out on if we had good customer support I know it's true maybe maybe this is all for the for the memes yeah 
Yeah, exactly. No, but like my my first hardcore got perma banned from that, and there was nothing Jeez. I could do. I mean, just Wait, perma banned for doing yep. the alking. Yep, it was six hours overnight, one night it's in my you didn't college. Have the streamer influence. It would have been a two day if you were a streamer. Oh already. yeah. <laughs> no, and I, I and I had some friends because I I was pretty well known as a hardcore back then. Like I yeah, my account was pretty pimping for its time. You said like rank thirty something. Yeah, rank thirty nine overall. Wow. And had like a Warhammer. Got like a, a DFS and stuff for for at the time nice. that was huge. I mean, at um, the time it was one DC and you're dead instantly. So yeah, it was it was crazy. So um, but that account was banned for four years. And wow. it got it got unbanned later because like i just like i was like oh, i'm just gonna troll and just try to like get this account like unbanned and i did the appeal and the 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 appeal thing is like have you ever tried to appeal this account before and i just like, straight up lied i was like no nah, no nah, i haven't it's like <laughs> clear, i had tried it like 70 times like in the first like week basically just spamming yeah. it They're like have you ever tried to do this i'm like nah nah bro like i'm no nah, it's the first time and then instantly unbanned i'm like what the fuck like this is oh so they probably weird. didn't even look at it it just got oh no it, everything's work. automated just they yeah. don't give a fuck they're like okay four years is okay you're fine it's good enough four years for one night of auto click <laughs> yeah literally so got got on bed haven't really pulled haven't really touched it much i've logged into it a few times but it's just such an ancient account yeah i mean you look at its bank and it's like yeah this is a different era like this just oh totally weird. and you just like don't have 90 percent of the stuff you used to progress nowadays yeah it's it's kind of a mess and I, i've never really been like super eager to start a new account just because i know how much time investment it is just to build up an account that's worthy <laughs> yeah <laughs> i get it I love starting new accounts, so it's always been one of my favorite things about it. Like, I never got super far in one account as a kid because I just get bored and make a new one. Mm. <laughs> just so I could do the early game stuff again, get to seven attack and Ferrock hitting the dummy and doing the quests and stuff. I loved that. I, I feel like I would, I, I feel like I was a player that was kind of like that. It's just like the older I've gotten, like, I, I've, I don't know, maybe it was also something about like watching certain creators and you know, like MMORPG. He oh was, yeah, he was one of those creators that like really inspired me like early on. Like, damn, like if you put in enough time, like, you can have a beast account, and that is like I remember thinking like that is really peak RuneScape. Like having an account that's just fucking goaded. Like that's cool. Yeah, I I get that for sure. Like I'll get people that come in or they'll say something to me or whatever because I I don't know what rank I am on the collection log. Let me look there. I'm rank seventy one. I have people and they'll be like, dude, you do collection log YouTube series and you're not even front page or whatever harassing me about it. But it's like, I don't know. I play so many different accounts and I've got like another account that I'm working on right now for a series I'm going to do. And it's just like, I don't know. I enjoy just like the journey more than the destination, I guess. I could have been front page collection logger forever, but I don't know. I Are don't want to play it when I'm not enjoying it. crazy high. Though, it so. is. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's bad at all. Yeah, I, I definitely am happy with how far it's come and stuff but i probably would have burnt out so hard if this is the only account i ever played yeah no that that's kind of what happens to me is like for the most part i'm too much of a nerd to like fully have like big burnouts yeah but but i definitely have like slow down progress because it's just like damn like the next like i already have like so much stuff that i've wanted and my account feels like it's at the point where it's kind of like why are you still playing like you've already gotten everything but, right so there always is the side of me that's like yeah, it'd be kind of fun to play like a snow it's always like snowflake i think snowflakes like p accounts like verfs like chunk mm -hmm. account that looks awesome like it doesn't actually look awesome to actually start <laughs> you know killing a uh, half a million hill giants or whatever but like uh -huh. when you click on his bank and he shows yes. off like just it's just trophy tabs like this is fucking awesome like this looks cool like, well, you know what? It, it yeah. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a little secret. I actually did make a chunk account once. It's a free-to-play chunk account where I was going to try to finish everything in free-to-play, but I burnt on it. Oh. It is so fun, though, yeah, doing the stupid restrictions. Like, I'm trying to think of what I had to do. I had to bake, a ch like, a cake in the first chunk, so I had to kill, like, 200 imps to get a pot of flour <laughs> to, like, make the cake and to get my cooking level up. I had to lure cows out of the cow pen with my main account to kill them and get oh beef to cook God. forever dude it was so fun though it's stupid i think it's just playing the game in a way you never have before it's just so enjoyable i, I would need to do that because just repeating the same sort of like written path of like go do this go do gauntlet go yeah. do this it's just like that's i don't want to 
I don't want to sink in 5,000 hours again just to get to a point where like I was already at on this account. Like, wow. Yeah, why? I agree. I think that's one of the big problems nowadays. There's, it's, we all know what the efficient path is and we're like, yeah. okay, we could have fun and do this instead, but that's an extra 50 hours, you know? Yeah. I, I need the, the restrictions. What, yeah. There, there was a survey at the end of last year talking about like those unofficial game modes. Did, did you have any thoughts on like them coming out with official like chunk mans or official sort of like task man mode or official like hard iron man mode not the hardcore but like the extreme iron man mode where you can't like use shops and stuff like what was your yeah i mean like okay so they all sound fun like i've considered mm -hmm. playing like a no quest account or something and like it sounds fun on paper but when you make it official i feel like some of the magic maybe dies off a little bit of it mm. And then it just becomes like another efficiency race of some people, which, you know, it's it's fun to be fair when like Hardcore or Ultimate Iron Man came out. Mm -hmm. It was really fun to see the race. But now, you know, the game modes kind of just become like it's just a normal thing that people do. That's whatever. Maybe if they made one or two game worlds where every account on that world was a chunks locked account. That could be kind of fun because then you'll know if you see somebody outside that chunk, you go, damn, that dude really did just <laughs> kill yeah. men to get 99 defense. Look at that yeah. dude over there killing goblins. What a bad ass. Yeah. I like that idea. You see a dude use a teleport spell. You're like, what the hell? Where's he going? I, I think so. My opinion on it, I know there's very strong opinions that are like, no, do not do this. Like, you're, there's already too many game modes. I don't see it that way. I literally am like, bro. Come out with as many official game modes as you want. Just don't don't throw them all into the game at once. Let's just make it make it hype where it's like every year there's a brand new official game mode that's just niche, kind of fun. People can mm. do it. Like why not? I, I already think the high scores are a mess anyway. As yeah, is, yeah. It, it, it's really not doing much to just add another game mode here and there. Like nobody really fucking cares about going to the high score. Like the high scores are a mess right now. They just, yeah. just are. And I don't even care anymore. It's just like whatever. Like who cares? Yeah. I mean, the only people that care about high scores anymore, they're going to be able to find their way to find their rank or whatever anyways. Exactly. You know, the average person that's going on there, they're just going to see links tighten and go, oh, that's cool. And then go back to playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. so like but yeah i i remember because there's so much hype every time a new game mode comes out and the player base spikes for a while i think people underestimate how successful the game mode releases have been i think that's why they're asking about it again because like group iron man i feel like a lot of people saw that as a failure yeah. and they were like oh so many people just quit their groups or you get one person burnt out but like in my clan i think it's like 20 percent of people are group iron man there's a lot of people still playing group iron man so i i think it was probably pretty successful Group Iron Man is very successful. It really is. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't see it really in my like jaded sort of like small sphere. It's yeah, just, no, I yeah, in the Max community, you're not gonna see anybody that cares yeah. at all about that. But just from like, yeah, because my clan's mostly just like super chill, so we get a bunch of newbies in there too. Mm -hmm. And so from that perspective, there's a lot of people that like came back to the game or started playing again or started playing for the first time because of Group Iron Man. So I think it's really. I think it's great that it's in the game because there are going to be those times where you have like a friend or a group of friends you're like, dude, that would be so fun right now to make a group Iron Man. And just the yeah. fact that there's a system for that in the game, that's so cool. And it's official. Like that's, I agree. That's wonderful. I, I, I think they did it pretty well. I think it's good. Yeah. And I mean, I really would love if just every year there was a brand new official game mode that's just some can be really niche some don't need to be like some can be kind of like like a, like a hardcore ult if they were to come out with like hardcore ultimate this summer or like in september or whatever just mm -hmm. like here it is here it fucking is go for it and it's just the most extreme shit ever not everyone needs to do it but at least it's there and I, again this is my point of view i don't i don't care if there's a new subsection of the high scores that has hardcore i don't think that's doing any negatives really yeah i, think, I agree i, think, I, agree. I think the thing. amount of people that care about high score integrities is probably slim to be honest of the player base so if they see an extra you know menu in the scroll bar as being the end times of old school high scores you know i, I don't think that i don't think that's the worst thing in the world personally mm -hmm. so i agree hardcore ultimate jagex please yeah. that's what we're and saying i'm just imagining like an official chunk like official chunk man mode would actually go so hard they need it to not make it start in lumbridge though they, they'd have to make it so you could start in multiple different spots and it would be that would be cool and, and the best part about it being official is there could be some little 
things that are like like exceptions like okay you're you're instantly going to start with three herbal or with this quest on if you yeah, want or yeah. just some little things where it's like okay but the best part about it is it's an official chunk so there is no cheating like there's just yeah it's impossible to cheat like you you're you have a physical barrier like you cannot leave this fucking chunk like you're doomed mm. here until you do what you're supposed to do and maybe there could be and again this would be i feel like the chunk man would be so extreme on like I don't know. This it might be like almost too much work to make a system like this because you'd probably have like an easy chunk and then a medium chunk and then like extreme chunk where it's like you have to literally do everything on the extreme end where the easy ones like ah oh, just do a little bit and you can move on to the next chunk. It's like, uh, but I, yeah, I, I think if like they make a chunk mode, they need to like take out the most extreme tasks probably to make anyone want to play it. Yeah, but and I feel like the best way to go about it is if there was just one difficulty. Yeah, because then it really is like, okay, if you're a chunk man, you know how much it took for them to get to this point. They're not like, oh, wait, are you an easy chunk man? Are you a hard right, chunk man? Like, right, you know, yeah. a stupid bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It has to be one difficulty. And maybe, you know, like, uh, you know, I keep bringing up RS3, I feel like. But on the trimmed comp cape in RS3, you used to have to win 5,000 games of Castle Wars. Mm -hmm. And they got rid of that. But I mean, technically, yeah, if you want to complete everything in RS3 to get all the you know, collectibles or whatever, you do have to still, to this day, winning for like 5,000 games of Castle Wars gets you something, I'm pretty sure. So yep. I think that removing the most extreme, like, yeah, if you start in Lumbridge, you don't need to get the 99 defense cape by punching men for a year straight. <laughs> <laughs> if you get KQ chunk, you don't need the pet, you know? Yeah, so that's what, that would be the hard thing to balance, basically. Yeah, it's like, how extreme are you going to make this? And one difficulty would make the most sense, but it's like, yeah. I feel like they they sh they would never release an extreme difficulty version because they already don't want to release collection log high scores because they mm -hmm. say they're afraid of encouraging people to go for something like that. And so encouraging people to spend, you know, half a year at Giant Mall, a year in Lumbridge, you know, God knows how many years if you have to get 99 RuneCraft. <laughs> I don't think they'd ever <laughs> even consider that for a moment. Dude, do you remember that, that, just the fact, like, uh, imagine it was like, um, wait, where do you get? I'm just trying to think right now. Like, is there something? I remember, like, on Limport series when he got to KQ, he was yeah. like debating whether or not to include the 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 rare drop table. <laughs> it was like it was like kill like kill like a hundred thousand KQ for this fucking dragon sphere or some bullshit. Yeah, some, yeah. Uh, ungodly I think he amount. Ended up getting all the rare drop table drops from the Calphite Guardians, anyways, or something like that. I think he got he like safe spotted them or something. Yeah, I think he got like his rune two age or so, or something. That yeah, was, like, that's what I don't think he got all of them though because no, you're right. That would have been oh, that would have been horrible. Yeah, just it's a fine line to balance between making the grinds not the normal ones that you do, and also not making yourself miserable. Dude, Limpwurts like just the fact that Limpwurts <laughs> hadn't even made an episode yet, and he'd already grinded for like two years. <laughs> <laughs> that was just his spare time fun activity. That's why it works so well. That's what I love about Limport. You know, he starts a new episode and he'll just be like, well, we spent 200 hours at Temporos leveling construction. And you can hear it in his voice. He loved it. <laughs> I love that. It makes me happy. That's amazing. Okay, I, I got I to gotta pee. Um, All right. Iron Queen asks, what is your favorite item to collect? And what is your biggest flex of collected items? All right, that's an easy one. So I collect Eyes of Newt in-game. People have given them to me. I bought them on the Grand Exchange over the years, and I have over 170 million of them. What the fuck? There was one point where they spiked up in value to 22 gold each. So I had like a two-point-something billion gold stack worth of Eyes of Newt. <laughs> Dude. Wait, is that the biggest stack like ever? Oh, what, I have no owns? idea, but I hope so, because if somebody owns That's more than that, I don't know how they did it. That I mean, because I'm just thinking, is there any other item besides just gold pieces that somebody would have more of? Like maybe runes, like maybe like air runes or something? Just Yeah, I think I've seen somebody with a billion of some kind of rune before. Oh my god. It's insane. I've seen some crazy collections out there, though. Most people just go for like 10 million of a bunch of different mm -hmm. items to have the green stack. Yep. I don't even know what it was about Eyes and Newt that it started as a joke or something and then it got out of control. That is wild. Yeah. Like, what, what's that? What is she just going to keep growing it? There's no stopping point. Yeah, no, I'm not going to sell them. I'm just going to keep getting it bigger and bigger. If anybody wants to donate them to me, go for it. But there's a buy limit of uh, 13,000, I think, every four hours. So oh, it takes geez. a while to uh, 
stack them up you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get to a max stack of those oh one day i hope and then we got to get a platinum eyes of newt thing so you can have a max <laughs> stack times a thousand of them <laughs> i have to keep making a new account every time i hit max stack to keep getting more <laughs> oh my god um okay yeah that's that's wild uh because i was talking to prison joe he collects lobsters nice he's, he's got like i think 20 or what What was it I, I can't even remember now i think it was like 20 mil or maybe it was like close to Dang. closer to 50 mil or something like that something that is wild, wild though yeah it's just disgusting <laughs> um okay dayton says been watching your videos since i started playing osrs and i'm a huge fan if you could design you, a piece of content what would it be and oh, what's man. one piece of advice that if you could you'd go back and tell yourself when you first started out on youtube all right, the piece of content, that's what somebody else had asked before too, and now that I've had a little time to think about it, I really, really want a raid uh, that's kind of like uh, Theater of Blood where it's group group content forced. You have to do it with a group. And there's roles where like somebody has to be in full justiciar with a dins, take aggro of this boss and tank it. You know, Keep it simple like the old school style, but some kind of mechanics where you can't just straight DPS the boss like you do now. I want something a little different. Mm. I think that'll be fun. And of course, make the points so that the tank gets an equal amount of points. Because like in TOA right now, there's no point using the red Karis unless you're going for speed runs because you're just giving up points so other people can kill the bosses faster. Yeah, I, f I feel like if there was to be a system, it's sort of like a BA for a raid. Like Yes, exactly. Like there's these forced roles and optimally what you'd want is everybody gets an equal chance at a purple at the end of it so yes and, yeah. and maybe you get roll points so something like okay like you can you can exchange your roll points as well so you're you're not always wanting to just do the same role because there'd be different perks of doing different roles or maybe maybe it doesn't even need to be that in, insanely complicated but something where yeah you are not being punished for just doing your role successfully like or, everybody's about, getting equal sorry i didn't mean to yeah, no you're, you're uh, good what about the rewards you get roll depending on what role you're playing? Like if you were in, you know, for like TOA as an example, mm -hmm. if you were the tank role, you'd have a chance to get the Masori armor. If you were like the damage dealer role, you'd have the chance for shadow or fang, you know, so yep. on and so forth. Yeah, they, they could do that. Um, so, uh, for some reason in my head right now, I'm just thinking like it would actually be kind of cool. Maybe if there wasn't an absolute like forced thing like okay well you eventually have to do an equal amount of time on all these roles or something what if it really was just like you just like the role you like and you just yeah. run that as much as you want and you become like an expert at it because it maybe i think that's cool yeah it's, it's just it's tough though because you're right like there there will be just like roles where they're just so much easier like the attack role like oh, oh just fucking this thing and, yeah but but it's cool in BA to see someone who's really good at healing it or is, yeah. collecting and stuff to see the like strats. Cause I'll see, you know, I'll think, oh, I did pretty decently that time. And then I'll remember there's some dude that can clear the room faster than the attackers can or whatever. Yep. And so I, I want to see that, but with PVM, just weird strats. It's not just click the boss, you know, introduce some weird mechanics. Maybe a new prayer book could play into that or something. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I just want to see different mechanics. I, I like the new stuff they've introduced over the years so just a raid with new mechanics we've never seen before okay. like that what's one piece oh, and, and it, yeah oh, the sorry advice, sorry i didn't i didn't mean to interrupt uh the advice i would give myself is to just make the videos that i want to that i think i would enjoy making because uh that's something i was always nervous about you know trying to make the stuff that i think other people want to watch and then in the end the stuff that i wanted to make was the stuff that did the best anyways so don't creatively limit yourself is what I would say. Just just do what you want to. Still enjoy it. Have fun. That's really good advice. And it's the best it's the best for fulfillment, like personal fulfillment. Like you're not you're never gonna feel forced because you're actually doing the stuff you want. And on top of that, mm -hmm. it's gonna be something that's the most sustainable as well. Yeah, absolutely. Especially for new YouTubers. Cause I get that question a lot. There are people like, Hey, I want to start making a series. What should I do? And I'm like, you need to just do what you enjoy, you know, because, yeah, you're going to quit YouTube before you hit five subscribers. If you just feel forced to do it a certain way, it's not going to be fun. Yep. All right. Ken asks, favorite game of all time? Oh, that is such a loaded question. I don't think that's possible to pick one game. So I'll just list a few. 
Okay. Uh, I'll say Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, Kingdom Hearts Two. Um, oh God, so all oh, RuneScape. That's kind of like a given. Everybody should know that by now. Um. Oh, there's too many. I can't list them all. I'll say Nine Nine Nine. And if I had to pick one more for a top five, I can't. I'm sorry. There's too many games. But yeah, those will be my favorites. My uncle played Kingdom Hearts a lot. I, I never, I never had a PS2 growing up, so I just. Never, oh no, I'm so sorry. But I remember Kingdom Hearts just being a really cool game. Just I never played it really. I played it a few. It's times. fun, but I would never use the word cool to describe it. You're like playing with Mickey Mouse and Goofy. It, w- it was cool <laughs> back then though, because like yeah. I was, a, I was a kid, you know. Right. Okay. That that was a good point. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was awesome back then, and as an adult, I just kind of like I still love them and play them, but I like laugh every time. There's like a serious cutscene. Somebody's talking about a character dying, and then you just hear Goofy oh, go horse Sora. That's so sad, <laughs> <laughs> dude. You know what? I'm gonna answer this. I know it's directed at you, but uh, no, that's all. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if you had a PlayStation One, did you? I I had a PS2, but I played some PS1 games on yeah. it. PlayStation One, man. Legend of Dragoon. And have you ever heard oh, of that I've game? Heard of, I've heard of that game. Yeah, I've Bro, never played it though. That was the best game. Four disc JRPG. Oh. It was massive, and it was. It's just such an amazing game. And it had this system where it was like it was like a turn based attack system, but you had these things called additions where it was like rhythmic. Like you'd you'd go in for the attack and you'd have to click a sequence of X buttons and occasional Z, uh, O's or what whatever oh, circles. That's amazing. I'm just yeah, trying yeah. to get a fucking PlayStation <laughs> control O's. <laughs> O's. Yeah, just so you're hitting all these just like the sequence you have to nail it and then the more times you nail it then you uh, like level up your addition and you get a new attack it was just really cool the way oh they did God. it it's like a rhythm rpg combat that sounds yeah, incredible was, and the story was beautiful like dude by the end because i had beaten it i mean I, I the last yeah. time i beat it was like in college like i just i was i would get an emulator for it and just play it on my laptop and um like it would, it would take a good like sixty hours, even after knowing exactly what to do and like looking up like where to find the stardust, because you want to like collect your fifty stardust throughout the game, and it's just way easier mm-hmm. just going on the wiki and f- finding where it all is. Back in the day, it was just like you had to examine every fucking object in the game. Oh to find yeah! It. Oh my god! That's <laughs> the greatest thing about retro gaming before the internet had like guides oh, yeah. on everything. You didn't know what the hell I you were know. doing, and then rumors would spread. Do you remember when people would have yes. rumors about every little thing? Oh, you can get the blue party hat from drain or bank yes. if you just do that oh those were the days bro i loved totally that totally right this game <laughs> i did something so stupid it yeah. was, what i was just gonna say yeah the gaming in general has just become so scientific now like everything's solved everything's like oh yeah, yeah just there's no there's no like deep conspiracies anymore like that was yes what, gaming oh. that was the enjoyment of gaming yeah what were you gonna say it was oh when i was like eight years old or something i uh was reading some internet for it's probably game facts or something if that's still around yeah. uh and somebody posted on there that you could get mew 3 in pokemon red and blue but you had to play the pokey flute in front of mewtwo a hundred times <laughs> <laughs> and so i got a piece of paper and i started doing tally marks God and then i got damn. to 100 you know nothing happened i was pretty upset you had to, like restart like okay maybe if i reset the game and do it again <laughs> yeah. maybe it'll work this time Fucking yes hell. but just like it, it's so stupid i spent like what 15 or 20 minutes doing something so stupid but like the exhilaration you get is this true it's, it's kind of like the creepy yep. pasta yep. era of the internet dude i i used to do i i played crash bandicoot warped on the, on the playstation one like a ton yep, as nice. a kid just like over 100 percent of that game like you could just keep doing like all the mini stuff and getting all the other extra jewels and stuff to like mm-hmm. level up your uh, account progress even further and i would like go through the game pamphlet i'm the fucking game pamphlet out of the little <laughs> like plastic container just i would look through there and for some reason my conspiracy filled like nine-year-old mind would just be like okay maybe if i like maybe there's like some secret gems in this pamphlet where if i <laughs> if i execute like because there would be like some random shit in in the pamphlet where it would tell you like kind of like tips and tricks yeah and i was yeah. wondering like i'd be like wait what if like they actually meant this and so i'd go into the game and i would try to like execute some little like thing that it showed on the pamphlet in a different way like maybe maybe they're trying to like you know maybe they're like de- uh, just like putting in some secret code in this thing where like if i do if i execute this sequence of buttons here like it'll give me an extra 
power up or something like it was yes, weird dude yes. the shit you would think of as a kid like you, you just want these things to work like you you want the cheat codes you want all the yeah the yeah no those are all the secrets unlocked and stuff you know there's actually a game that came out uh, in the past few years called tunic mm. and i won't say too much about it but if you like that kind of itch of discovering secrets that game is plentiful with that if you don't look up a guide it's pretty insane the amount of stuff like i'm talking like the manual like there's a manual in the game that's kind of like a game manual you collect pages for and it's just like you described there like everything in it is a secret code and message dude to figure out more speaking of like secret codes and stuff like um there was a game called monster rancher 2 on the playstation oh i played that so much bro you could you could put in different discs and it would generate a monster yes you could put in any disc yes any disc backstreet boys cd and you're getting some creepy (laughs) abomination yes dude that was the most insane i remember like i had a friend that just had a bunch of cds of just random shit and i was like dude bring them over to my house we're just gonna like try every (laughs) fucking one of these and see if we can get like some great monster (laughs) like oh my god God. that was the best that was was an amazing game even my dad Dad, i need your van halen albums (laughs) (laughs) oh you're gonna listen to them no i need a new monster (laughs) <laughs> like, dude that was so cool like that was the coolest thing ever oh it really was it's such a i feel like no other game ever did that it's such a shame it was yeah. great that was a that was a wild experience as a kid like that was yeah i would just spam that all day just like uh, what other <laughs> yeah. discs can i find and i, and I would just yeah. leave them on the ground so they would just get all scraped up and stuff i didn't give a fuck <laughs> yeah oh my gosh i struggle with that trying to teach my kid to put his games back in the case it hurts yeah, so much it's bad now, mm. nowadays there is no physical games everything's digital it's crazy oh i can't i collect everything physical if i can i still love having physical games that's cool that you like that that's a great thing to actually collect because if you're a collector that's in it for like maybe some potential profit in the future like bro you just you saw oh, yeah like i Definitely. don't know if you saw that video um was it marcus brownlee i think he was the one that uh, he bought an original iphone that was had wow. had never been unboxed, and it went for like forty five thousand dollars or something. Oh my god! Like, what? Like just just the original? Uh, the, this was like fifteen years ago. Well, like at the time, it was small, dinky, like piece of garbage that no one could ever. Yeah, use just a now, piece of shit. Just and, a collector's and, item, now. and it just hadn't been opened yet. And so you just wow. buy something, don't open it. Fifteen years later, you, you sell for like uh, you know fifty grand. It's just like what the fuck. Yeah, that's my justification for game collecting is that like, okay, it's a physical thing. It has like an actual value. So if, you know, shit ever hit the fan in my life, I could technically sell it. Yeah. So that's my excuse. I don't know if it's, you know, no, a valid it, it, one, That doesn't but. even need to be an excuse. I just feel like most people kind of see it as like, oh, collectors. Like you just yeah. you collect enough things. I mean, people collecting Pokemon cards and. Oh, yeah, else. for sure. Seems- well, you know, a, a little anecdote about that. I bought this. I, yeah, I do like collecting games and playing weird ones I've never heard of. So I bought this game called Folklore for the PS3. I'd never heard of it, but I was like, oh, this looks cool. And I've never heard of it. Mm-hmm. I got it for like five bucks at a local game store. And then like uh, COVID hit and stuff, you know, and we were going through our games and looking them up. And uh, that game is worth like 50 bucks now. <sighs> it just like became a, what do you call it? A cult classic. Just like out of nowhere, people started wanting it. And mm-hmm. they're it was not a really widely circulated game so yeah no stuff like that can happen too which is cool it's crazy and, and if you can keep things in pristine condition or just never open it yeah like bro you it's it's crazy it is wild especially pokemon stuff just in general like it's gotten ridiculous we were trying to get uh i don't remember what it was black and white two or something and it's like almost 200 bucks for the game or something like Damn. that i'm just like yeah nope that is getting emulated yeah, there was I'm a good. <laughs> th- there was like a, a game crazy near where I lived, and mm-hmm. I recently went back there because I, I moved back to Oregon after several years away, and um, I went back to like my home city and just like went to that game crazy and just like it has the same kind of layout. It's just like a really like it, it's almost seems like underground a little bit. Like you just see some games and you're like, holy shit, like these are ancient. But yeah, the prices compared to what I remember have all skyrocketed like yeah i remember going in and like you could buy a brand new game boy advance you know for mm-hmm. whatever like i don't know at the time it was like oh you can get one for like 80 bucks or some shit just yeah. dirt cheap brand new and again i was a kid at that time but nowadays like you want one of those like yeah good luck this is like 650 bucks or like you know 800 dollars yeah it's just for a game boy and like bro this is it's wild nuts. 
Yeah, if you're if you're like into game collecting and you just buy whatever, like I feel like it's already hit with like anything PS2 and before. Yeah. The prices are just so damn expensive. I feel like it's going to start happening with like the Xbox 360, PS3 era, Wii era, because mm-hmm. those are starting to become retro consoles. I'm sorry to use that word. I know it makes us feel old, but it, it's crazy. Dude, yeah, P- so PS1s were tanks. I mean, we, I still have a oh, PS1 yeah. at my parents' house. That shit still mm. runs flawlessly. <laughs> that we we bang that thing around like the amount of times we just yank our controller, just fall off the shelf, just, just hit the floor. Yeah, it still works. It's crazy. It is amazing. I had an N sixty four that I dropped a TV on once, and it still works. <laughs> <laughs> And those TVs were not light at that time. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, no, they had the huge boxes on the back. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Bro. Yeah, I was climbing up on the entertainment center trying to put a VHS <laughs> tape in, and the whole thing came down. <laughs> Dude, I I was like a Craigslist fanatic when I was a kid. Oh um, yeah. For, for for a few years, I would just like barter with a bunch of people trying to get like good prices on stuff, and just I would just like resell stuff and then buy something else I wanted. And nice. I remember this this guy was you know selling a fucking boob tube that was like a it was like a 35 inch boob tube i mean this this thing this thing weighed like 450 pounds (laughs) just just ridiculous i mean you would need like literally four people carrying this fucking thing yeah and it it was it was it was literally longer than it was like wide like it just (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this thing was a literal cube and i remember we brought it into our room set it on the dresser and it was just balancing it was just like this <laughs> wait this oh thing, my god you're gonna die would, if that this thing, thing falls oh over. if it fell it would it would <laughs> dent the floor i mean it would just oh break god. through and then my parents, oh, I just remember, we, they just come in and this fucking TV is just so abominable in our room. Just so, it, it, we bought it for like 30 bucks. And <laughs> then I was like, okay, we got to sell this shit. Like, this is so bad. Yeah, so, that's like a pay me to get rid of it. Oh, oh yeah, no. But if somehow I found some person that was going to buy it for like 50 or 60 bucks. And we were going to like actually oh make God. a profit off it. We had to drive over to like this fucking like safeway parking lot to some sketchy people <laughs> they had a fucking pickup <laughs> truck and we had like six people lug it from our minivan into their truck just this piece of oh my shit God. and i'm like dude th- th- i just think back there i'm like that doesn't even seem that long ago but like people were literally selling fucking bricks of tvs so it's just like yeah what? like who was buying this like yeah, it's crazy to think about. I'm I'm glad we have flat screens now because yeah, I remember like lugging a TV upstairs or something, even oh. a tiny like 12 inch TV or something. Oh, you had to wrap your whole arms so around bad. it, and it was like it was like holding another person. It was so bad, dude. Mm-hmm. My my friend's house, they had one of like those box like theater TVs. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yes, yes. Those things were heavy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I just remember, like, if you looked at a different angle, like, the TV, you just couldn't even see it. It would just, like, kind of, like, fade yeah. to black. Just, like, dude, mm-hmm. like, this thing sucks. Yeah, it's, like, one of those things that sounds good on paper, and then <laughs> you get it, and you're, like, damn, that was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> after lugging it in and spending a $1,000 on all shit. I shouldn't have gotten this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're lucky nowadays. Yeah, we really are. Um, all right. Let's see. Why Ace asks, if you were to choose your next life as an animal, what would you choose or spirit animal? I don't know. <laughs> like This is just like bait to find out if I'm a furry or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good question. It's like any animal. Yeah. So my first instinct is to say like foxes or something because mm-hmm. that's my favorite animal. They're cute and stuff. But like the life of a fox actually sounds like it sucks. So I guess I'd be a dog or a cat that just gets spoiled all day. And then I can just shit on the floor and you tell me it's okay. Yeah. That sounds good. I don't know any other animal that a reasonable person would pick. It sounds like pretty bad to live as any animal in the wild. Yeah, I mean, even human, just like, God damn, I don't know if I want to do another life as human. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could do another run through. <laughs> I've only been here 27 years. God forbid I've got 80 more. I can't. <laughs> straight up, though, just, like if, yeah. if I were to be any animal, it would straight up have to be like, like a fucking eagle or something something that oh, can okay. fly like just that would be cool that's true yeah it it would have to either be like a super predator like a fucking lion or a tiger yeah or 
yeah like a bird like a, a majestic bird or something that'd be pretty cool I guess like a, a panda would be pretty cool too. You just kind of sit there eating bamboo all day while humans try to force you to make children and bro, then you just die. Bro, imagine like reincarnating as like a fucking angler fish, depths of the ocean, <laughs> just pitch black. Never seeing anything. Just, God damn it. You have a light bulb above your head. And just, dude, have you heard about what angler fish do? So like the female angler fish are like the dominant ones and the mm. males attach to the females and they basically just like they they like suck on to the female anglerfish for like life basically like they're, they're like stuck there for life and they wow. end up like I, I don't know what the hell is going on there but it is like the freakiest fucking thing it's so alien it's like that like, is terrifying yeah the depths of the ocean are scary i don't know what the hell is going down there it's just weird and you made me realize we should get two anglerfish every time we catch one <laughs> I'm actually getting two anglerfish right now. We're in my rod is blessing right now. Oh, the that's the only canon way to fish anglerfish. Yeah. I'm actually so. fishing them right now. It's funny you mentioned. Nice. That. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I love the unknown, unexplored things in our world and the universe. So the deepest parts of the ocean are very interesting. It's so wild. It, it's just so different down there. It's an entirely different ecosystem, and the things that you know, that creatures uh, adapt to and evolve to over time. It's just so freaky to see what you need to survive down there. Dude, it's just, it's weird thinking about like how things evolve to get to that point. Like I was, I was yeah. reading this book on like um, octopuses and mm -hmm. like th they're like super smart. Like they're like yeah. genuinely like intelligent and they have like, I don't know. It's weird. They so they're doing a bunch of studies on them and stuff, and I'm just like, bro, how did they? How did an octopus get to this stage? Like, how? Like, what is? This is so wild. Like, how does life like take that turn and take like millions and millions of other turns too, where there's like genuinely just like millions and millions of species of just the most bizarre yeah. things ever. It's, it's so just like weird. a dice roll, and then what works works. I mean, it's crazy. Oh, it's so crazy. And, and then for it to result in some weird hairless apes that talk about RuneScape on the internet. You yes, know? <laughs> yes. And and the the wildest thing is to think, we think it's totally normal. Like we think we're like, I, I, it's so easy to kind of like put us into a box of like, oh yeah, like we're humans. Like we're like the normal species. But bro, yeah. like if if you were to just see any, if we, if we were to see like, quote unquote modern human like let's just say like 30,000 years ago I guess that's mm -hmm. not really modern anymore but still modern enough just to yeah. see what their life would be and see what language they use and everything like we would we would th think that's bizarre like what is happening oh, yeah. like these are For aliens sure. I mean you just think about like the traditions and cultures of humans even just like a thousand or two thousand years ago are so different to our modern life yeah. it, it's like almost like evolving in real time you know not from like a physical perspective, but mentally, I guess, you know, there's so many things we would never do nowadays that were just completely normal back then. Like you would probably never, you know, shit into a pan and throw it out your window, <laughs> but that was like an everyday thing Yeah. before toilets and sewage system. Oh my <laughs> God. And, and dude, like you think like a thousand years from now, they're going to look yeah. back at our, and th the, this is the wild thing is if we don't like blow ourselves up, and just like we we continue yeah. on with humanity and like the way we're progressing like dude we are living in the very beginning like 100 years of television and video and media so mm -hmm. they are going to be like wildly studying us in like a thousand oh, yeah. years they're gonna be looking back and they're like bro these guys were like just getting out of the like barbaric state of like being human and not really knowing what it means to be like an enlightened human they're just like actually still living in the dark ages basically but they still have all this crazy technology like it is going to be the craziest thing ever yeah like, like how we learned in school about like henry ford starting factories and that being like one of the big manufacturing things and nowadays it's so it's just like a given like yeah of course we have factories that make every single thing we make yep so in the future they're gonna look back and be like wow they used to have to do you know whatever we do nowadays that's gonna be foreign to them dude do you ever think, cause I'm just thinking, okay, let's just think the year's 2100 now. So, you yeah. know, like 76 years later, do you think, let's just say we've died by then, you know, mm -hmm. 
or you know, even like a time where like where we haven't died yet. Let's just say you know we're in our like 90s or somewhere still living. But uh, just in your like, do you think your YouTube videos, your collection log series of back in the you know back in the 20s? Like, do do you think like that would be something where people are like, wow, like this is this is an artifact, like this is a fucking time capsule back to the old days of old school RuneScape. Nobody even plays, nobody even knows what this really is anymore. Like, do you think that people, like the content creators, yourself included, like, do you think your stuff will end up being timeless, or will it literally just go into a sea of just the vast sea of just like nobody's ever gonna look at this shit ever again? Like, that's a great question, honestly. Um, you know, I guess it depends on, yeah, like the relevancy of RuneScape, you know, so many people over the years have said RuneScape's going to die this year, next year, whatever. If it just lives forever, then yeah, I could see people still being interested in, you know, like our content from back in the day, but I don't know. I don't know if like general entertainment content that we make now will be at all relevant or interesting in a hundred years. Cause like for, for sure, you know, big podcasts with like intellectuals on it and stuff like that those those sure. old interviews are definitely going to be like you know quote unquote timeless yeah but it's but you are right like at what point are things considered timeless or not like are the random instagram reels of fucking people making a <laughs> an apple pie is like is that going to be relevant right. but it's it, it's still it, it still is just crazy to me to think like i don't know when you see old footage like i remember like on reddit just a while ago seeing some footage from like the 20s like 1920s mm. i'm just like bro like this stuff is ancient like this stuff is valuable like to see footage from back then like this is really really interesting to see and it's weird to kind of see how humans looked and kind of behaved and stuff it's just mm-hmm. so you just wonder but we have so much footage of things nowadays it's like is it all just going to be lost is it all just going to like be irrelevant yeah that's really interesting i don't know i feel like uh history kind of has a bias to only take the best stuff so mm. like do you remember any of the have you heard of any of the failed artists from the 1970s probably not nope nope but you know you've heard of all the big ones that's you true. know everybody knows everybody knows elvis even though he's been dead for god knows how long everybody knows you know i feel like even kids know about michael jackson even though he's been dead for over 10 years but nobody remembers the you know random dude who was big only in his hometown so i feel like it's going to be the same with online content maybe you know maybe uh the biggest youtubers pewdiepie's footage will be looked back on in 2100 but you know i'm not so confident people are going to be super interested in uh my hard crying man (laughs) in 2100 to be honest maybe my castle crashes all pets guide for the retro gamers they'll they'll watch that one that'll still be relevant probably a thousand views a day still but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my god it's it's crazy because in the next few years we're gonna be seeing youtube videos that say 20 years ago oh yeah you're right oh god 20 years ago like that that is scary youtube came around what like 2006 ish yeah i think so. that's when i started I using it i think it was 2006 holy crap so yeah it has almost been 20 years Wow. Yeah, you're going to see videos 20 years ago. You're going to see comments 20 years ago. Like, oh, my God. Like, Because yeah. oh at what point is YouTube... Because I'm, I'm certain YouTube's still going to have all their videos in the next 30 years, like, all up there still. And oh, yeah, for You're going to be seeing comments, like, 50 <clears throat> years ago. Like, oh, my God. Like, what is Yeah. That's going to be crazy. It's like a scary thing that everything is so archived, though, because, you know, like, people that get important jobs like a big ceo or a politician or whatever like of our generation you're going to be able to go through the internet and find all of the you know comments they left on five nights at freddy's markiplier videos when they were eight (laughs) (laughs) you're going to be able to see them saying stupid things they're going to go yeah do you know the president of the united states 30 years ago was watching like furry videos and stuff no way dude the the presidents <laughs> need to like from the get-go like they need to have parents that are like removing that like you cannot be on social media you you have to have like a yeah. pristine like you got to be the most excellent version of yourself like you can't yeah you are being watched non-stop like yeah, your exactly. phone's watching your face and listening to you 24 7 like i'm, I'm not i'm kidding. excited to see it no, no, no. I mean, like, straight up. Listen, th- this sounds yeah. crazy. Uh, this is like a several months ago. I, I had my mm-hmm. phone in my pocket. And I- I- um, my mom was like, 
driving me over to her house because we're gonna have dinner and Mm. she was like hey like some like i I was hanging out with this one of her friends and she had like this baking mix it's like some brownie mix or something she was just mentioning this like betty crocker shit and literally next time i scroll on twitter when i get back to my place it i'm just seeing baked like boxes of like betty crocker stuff oh yeah like in my Mm -hmm. advertisements i'm like what the fuck dude like yeah my phone is just listening to me nonstop. Yeah, like I, I've had that happen too. Like where my wife and I were talking about, like, oh, we need to get more dog food, and then I start seeing dog food ads. And <laughs> you know, at first you can think like, oh, it could just be like, you know, uh, bias. Like, oh, I didn't think about the dog food ads until I said it. But I feel like, yeah, it's happened a They're lot listening, of times, dude. Yeah. They're nonstop listening, and the face cam stuff. Like, I, I I've always wondered. I, I don't know if you have an iPhone, do you? Oh, I've got an Android. Okay, well, the, the 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 iPhone like now has this face ID. And mm-hmm. yeah. it, it basically kind of forces you to do like a double check on the face ID. Like if it doesn't do it once, it's going to try again and mm-hmm. you got to get your face lined up. And it's like, I've always wondered like why, like it's very clear that it's too dark for the iPhone to even see my face. So like, why don't you just pull up the number pad right now? But it'll always, always try to get your face in there. Like it's just always trying. And then as soon as your face is in there, like, dude, I swear to God, like your your iPhone is now tracking eye movement. Like one hundred percent, it's got to be oh, when you're probably. on apps and stuff. Yeah. Like w- when you're looking at stuff, when you're looking at Instagram reels or whatever you're looking at, your eyes, like it's tracking what your eyes are looking at, and it's knowing what gr- what captures you, basically. Yeah, and, I would not be surprised, dude. At it's, all. it's getting out of control. Like just the fact that there's a front facing camera that's permanently looking at you. Uh, microphones oh, permanently yeah. hearing you mm-hmm. like it's yeah, i remember back right in the day now. we'd cover our webcams with tape you know because we're also paranoid about being <laughs> yeah. watched yeah. but now we've just carried around with us that's true it's kind of scary to think about especially because all the conspiracies were like the government's gonna watch you and if you say something out of line they're gonna come pick you up and throw you in the back of a van but it's actually just companies want to sell you brownie mix really bad so yeah, if you talk yeah. about it they'll pay us more <laughs> yeah literally literally <laughs> so like crazy. the the big surveillance thing has arrived and it's literally just betty crocker and <laughs> apple <laughs> you know, biden couldn't care less yeah. about the fucking stupid tiktoks we're watching but yeah, you know, no, damn it. it. Betty Crocker wants to know. Like you you got it. Like there, there's no way people would give a fuck about like what we're, like there's not enough CIA agents out there that yes. just care enough to look at every single person's stuff. Yeah, and why do they care? That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. They're not like they would not care at all. Mm-hmm. You know. No what am I looking at that would interest a CIA agent at all? Okay, OSRS Baronite Mace <laughs> and they're going to be like oh, monitor OSRS. that, track it. <laughs> you ever see those memes where like shows the FBI agent watching like what you're searching for and he's just like bored out of his mind or he's just yeah. like so confused. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so bad. Oh yeah. But yeah, but nowadays data, it, 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 a lot. if you wanted to run for like president or anything like bro, you can you have to have a pure slate like nowadays, mm-hmm. like the purest. Yeah. Or you would just be getting absolutely dogged on for yeah. everything. But yeah. I mean, maybe the, that'll just become the standard. That's going to be the that's, argument. That's the standard. That's Trump set. I mean, just, just unapologetically, just, just be, you know, whoever you want. And like that ends up being like your form of like kryptonite in a sense. Like, Oh my God. Just be yeah. completely unapologetic about who you are. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could totally do that. Believe me, the My Little Pony content I consumed was purely <laughs> innocent. I just love the lore. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Um, Stigali asks, what's the story behind the saying, Daddy, I'm clogging? Oh, my God. The, what? I don't. You tell me. Listen, you know, I don't know. It kind of sounds familiar, but I'm pretty sure this is the first I've heard of this. Okay. I good. think that's just the golly being funny. Okay, good. Everyone needs to start saying it, though. If you get caught <laughs> clogging in RuneScape, you have to say that. I'm sorry. All right. Um, what does it feel that arguably your worst dry streak in the game was forever immortalized in the collection log by typing in your username? I like it. Wait, I like wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. I need to look it up. Yeah, go on, go on the collection log and go to the search screen and type in G4UAFS. And you'll see it. There. Oh God! Wait, how how long did the Eternal Glory take you? I think it took me like hundred thirty thousand charges. Oh, 
<laughs> it was bad. And I would stream some of it, and then you'd get like some dude that really wanted to follow me around and keep killing me. So it was pretty rough. Bro, that is... <laughs> That that is it's like the dumbest item to go dry on. It's too. the it is the worst item to go dry on, because you're permanently in the wilderness. You gain no XP and you gain no mm -hmm. GP. Yeah, you actually started losing GP at a certain point. Oh my god! I don't even think I profited by the end because you, at a certain point I was losing like two or three hundred gold per glory. Oh my god! <laughs> I probably lost a couple hundred mil going for it or something dumb like that. Um, imagine if you were an Iron Man too. Because, oh no i'm good because it, it's literally like three <clears throat> times the amount of hours yeah because you have to uncharge them by one every single yep. time right yep i thought about going on and on, going forward on the hardcore but if i go dry again i don't know no i'm good yeah. I've, I've seen so many iron man get their eternal glory within the first like five trips it's like, that yeah seems it's because to be so common. iron man only tries like one or twice <laughs> once or twice yeah. to go for it and they give up i've done it's mine the only one yeah. I, I got mine in like eighteen thousand, thank God. But I oh, knew I knew yeah, an that's... I knew an Iron Man that got his in like seventy thousand. I'm like, oh, because oh. like seventy thousand, like that is like straight up like eighty hours. Just imagine teleporting with your glory seventy thousand times to uncharge them. God, like that is that is horrible. It's they need brutal. to start making disenchantment scrolls. <laughs> straight up, straight up, <laughs> just for this one grind. Okay, but yeah, it's it's cool having it in the in the game though. I yeah. really like that. That is, it's neat. Shout um, out to Mod Flippy who put that in there. Fucking shout out. Uh, Hannibal says, "I love all of Shelby's series. Such a great person." My question is, what will you do once you're left with only the rarest drops left on the collection log? Thank you, Hannibal, and I am just going to simply stop playing on that account. <laughs> I don't want to go for third age and stuff like that. But honestly, with the way content comes out in this game, I feel like there's always something new to grind. So I probably won't ever reach the point where I'm like Marnie just grinding for third age because yeah. I have like a lot of stuff that I actually have to do in real life that takes up time. So I don't think I'll ever be able to pull that off. I'm not talented enough. Okay. Uh, Kihira, yeah, maybe I'm mispronouncing that asks would you ever consider playing warframe again oh my god i get this question so much did you have you ever looked at my tweets before and read the replies uh -uh. Sater? so there's a guy uh called pi god and for the past four or five years every single tweet i've put out there he replies <laughs> asking when i'm gonna start making warframe videos again four every single tweet years. i'm not joking four or five yes <laughs> go you can scroll down my twitter just for an, a random amount of time and click a tweet and he's there with the dancing bird gif asking when i'm making warframe videos again and so i have a very passionate subset of my viewers that watched from back in the day when i made warframe videos and, uh, you know, to that, I will say, I don't know exactly. I will say that I may have started playing Warframe again like a month ago. And I may have recorded one or two videos for it. But I can't promise I'll ever get posted. That's yeah. all I can say. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Uh, yeah, this guy also has the Warframe question. <laughs> he says, oh, shit, I know that guy. Shelby, if you had to 1v1 quick scope slash no scope another content creator on Rust, map, not game. Who would it be and why? Oh, the Rust map from Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah, from Modern Warfare Two. Yeah. I think I'd do it with I do it with Wild Mudkip. He just seems like the best dude to play Call of Duty with, honestly. <laughs> you know, he doesn't get mad. He doesn't rage at you. He's probably just says, "Oh, nice." Every time you get a quick scope, <laughs> I'd probably do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> All right, Radio Guy asks, "What is your favorite moment out of every collection you've gotten throughout your series? Least favorite?" Okay, favorite and least favorite mm -hmm. moments from the entire collection log series. I'd say probably Third Age Druidic is probably one of the favorites. That's just so insane. I still can't even comprehend that I've gotten that uh, in the log. Least favorite is probably that Eternal Glory grind or uh, a lot of the random grinds that I just really hated, like going for Fish Sack. Like getting the fish sack isn't even a satisfying collection log to pop up because you reflect on like all the time you've spent <laughs> going for it and you just get this stupid sack that you're never even going to wear. <laughs> and then the insult to injury is if you add the fish barrel to it, it's actually a downgrade because you can't even put the fish in the bank while you're wearing it. So you have to take it off oh to deposit God. the fish. So like it's just <clears throat> I say that's the worst. 
and your wrist starts hurting after like an hour or two doing aerial fishing Dude, aerial fishing is the fucking worst yeah i said i was gonna get a fish sack again on my hardcore and i just gave up after like two hours god damn it is bad yeah it's just like there's no there's no good flow to it it's just like no because just... you got to like drop the inventory or knife them to it's, make more fish chunks it's ridiculous it's just stupid the whole place just pisses me off have you ever done drift net fishing no i've seen people do it though it looks interesting drift net fishing i've only done it a little bit and that is another hated place where i just I, it feels similar to aerial fishing it, just, it feels like you're just spam clicking just kind of like just mindlessly clicking different areas there's no real rhythm to anything you're just oh like i hate those activities they just bother me aerial fishing is the most egregious for sure because at least drift net like you're getting crazy xp but like yeah god damn like i I'm sure have to a bunch of like jute for drift net fishing as yeah, well or something jute fibers make those drift nets <laughs> yeah if you're an iron man you have to do your like jute fiber runs it's kind of weird <laughs> god <laughs> yeah that sounds no, rough but that, that's the that's the that's the fun part of it is doing the jute oh. fibers. the actual drift net fishing is where it becomes unbearable I don't, I don't understand how people i mean i do understand how people get into it because it's good xp and if you're good at it mm. then it's really good xp but like god the activity itself is just so bad yeah there's another one actually did you ever do the underwater agility for the uh, trident the merfolk trident yes i never yeah, you just spam click the chest to get more pearl is so Dude, bad that that activity it, it's again it's one of those things where like okay this when it first dropped, it was really good. Like it was like I'm pretty yeah. sure it was like best in slot for like agility or something. And yeah, because like, you got agility and thieving. So yeah, it, tend, it was like over EHP. Yeah. And like and like Iron Higer made a video of it, and I was like, oh shit, like maybe I should do this. And I tried it. And I'm like, bro, this is this activity <laughs> stressing me out. Yeah, exa- that's the worst part. Is it's stressful. <laughs> just like this it's just is, not fun. I'm not having a good time right now. Just yeah. constantly needing to get air bubbles and shit. I'm just yes. like, dude, this is. It, remi- it kind of reminded me of like a retro game that's just stressful. So, you know what the most stressful yeah, game was at, at retro? Pac-Man. Mm. Pac-Man. Oh my god. Pac-Man stressed yes. me the fuck out. Like just, <laughs> like, I hated playing that those kind of games. Oh man, my mom getting chased Pac-Man by ghosts so nice. and stuff. Like yeah, dude, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I think actually the underwater agility course was uh, suggested by Framed. I think a long time ago. At like a Q and A, and then they actually made it. So I, I think they should do stuff like that again, where they get the community to uh, drop a design for content and make it. I think the last time they did that was what was it, rooftop agility or something like that? Muzzleload mine? I don't remember. Yeah, way way back. I want that to come back. That was Me pretty too. cool. Idea. Me too. I yeah no, there's there's so many unexplored avenues in this game that we just there's there's so much hidden potential with this game like the, the fact that it's point and click the fact that it runs off of a tick system like there's so mm-hmm. much that can be added and in my personal opinion like first off if i were given the opportunity like hey Seder, we want you to make like a skilling activity i would go so hard on that the problem <laughs> is it takes so it there's, there's so much involved in like creating an activity because not only do you have to like theorize how it goes, but it has to be implemented somewhat to actually get a feel for it, like realistically. Because yeah. in my opinion, the best skilling methods and the best of any sort of methods, uh, the, the even the best like PVM things, like I'm thinking like four to one ohm. Like I don't know if you solo chambers. Yeah, I've um, done it before. So like, solo chambers has some great flow when you get into ohm. Like it's a great fight. There's a rhythm to it. There's a pattern. And you yep. get really sucked into it, and it's really fun. Same thing with Verzik, you know, Verzik P2, Verzik P3, you get into these cycles. And if you really want to master it, you can get into these really beautiful, like, five-tick butterfly cycles. And everything, like, just works, and it's really fun because there's just a pattern and a flow to it. And yeah. that is what, ultimately, in my opinion, makes the best skilling methods, too, is, like, the rhythm and the flow. And so if you could create a really rhythmic, really satisfying um, sort of skilling method that is just super enjoyable and you super just get hooked into it and there's nothing annoying about it. That's like the biggest thing is like, it's so easy to drop a method, especially skilling related, because I feel like in the devs' eyes, they drop a skilling method and the only thing they're thinking about is like, okay, is the XP rates on par where it needs to be? And is it... 
you know, is it going to give enough, uh, whatever. I'm just trying to think of like some recent example, like Giants Foundry is the most egregious. I think Giant, Giants Foundry, the gameplay loop of that is just so fucking boring and so just pitiful. It's just, <laughs> it's the worst experience. It's the worst. The only thing that's good about it is that you get massive amounts of XP for the bars. So people just feel forced to do it on an Iron Man because it's just so yeah. great when it comes to that. But the if you just take away all that and you just focus on the gameplay, it is so crappy. It's so fucking crappy. I hate it. It's yeah, like a toddler mini game. It, it's, a, it's a toddler's mini game where you're matching colors with colors. <laughs> there's no rhythm to it. You're, you're constantly getting fucked over if you look away for a second. There's it's just It's horrible. And it's so yeah. easy to just develop something in theory where like, this looks good in theory. And then you actually start playing around with it. Like, this is so bad. Like, I hate this. And if I, if think, I yeah, oh, no, yeah, no, go, no go. I'm just I was going to say go the, t- the tough part about developing that is like most of those things you mentioned, like um, the four to one ohm mm-hmm. at solo and the Verzik, like spider web running, take perfect with the mm-hmm. scythe and stuff. Those are all accidents. Like those were not coded yep. to be the method. So it's hard to intentionally come up with something like that. No, because it, some of the best is. skilling methods are all accidents, three ticking, two ticking, one and a half ticking, yep, and all those other things. And, and they were not put in the game on purpose, yeah. And, and that's why you need to like understand, like the devs need to understand what is, what is so good about this, and like it is difficult. It is difficult to come out with something where, like one, one of the best things, one of the most satisfying things about any sort of method, is feeling like the players discovered it, or feeling like the players have figured out something that wasn't intended like that alone yep. literally adds so much more fun to things when you it feel, really does when you feel like you're making the content your bitch like i i have unlocked this secret power that I, n- nobody thought was going to be here and now i'm abusing it like a hundred percent and if you were to develop something if you were like galaxy brain developer you would come up with something that's instantly really addicting it has great flow to it when it comes to resource, if it was some sort of like gathering skill, if you're getting the resource when you anticipate getting it, so something unlike Winter Todd Braziers, where you run over to the Brazier, you click it, you wait three seconds, oh, you get fucking frozen. Okay, you haven't actually <laughs> performed anything yet. You've just clicked the Brazier, now you get frozen. Okay, click the Brazier again. Oh, it's about to break. Oh, you didn't fucking do anything. You just got hit 12. Like, there, yeah. there's no rhythm, there's no satisfaction with it. It's just click the thing. Oh my god! Like it just make it gives me a headache thinking about these activities because they're so boring and they're so yeah. It's like there's wrong. mechanics there just to make sure you're paying attention rather than like an incentive to pay attention. Yes, you know. Yes, like with Ulm, you could do three man Ulm and just like barely pay attention and scrape by, taking a ton of damage. But if you're willing to put in the effort, like mm-hmm. you said, it feels like you're unlocking a secret way to do it almost. Yes. And that, so I feel I feel like we need, you know like Vardorvis have you done Vardorvis yeah a lot of it you know the captcha attack where you yep. click all the bubbles mm-hmm. we need a skilling method that integrates reactionary clicking like that I think yeah yeah that would and, be really fun and I feel like with most skilling most skilling and again this is all subjective ultimately but mm. I think what is kind of universal at least universal enough is flow pattern like quick easy patterns and like just the satisfaction of extracting something when you expect it to be extracted like just yeah i agree with you're that. clicking on something you're moving you're not being stagnated you're not being like like glued onto something like one of the most annoying things is like clicking on like a uh, like an ore vein or something and then the next like three ticks you literally can't do anything because your players like magneted to this thing <laughs> and it's just like yes yeah it's just painful so yeah there has to be that flow and it doesn't yeah. feel like you're restricted and kind of locked in or anything. And and you don't, when you have an activity that's fun enough and it has a flow and it has a sense of reward and a slight bit of RNG, like one of the cool things is, I don't know if you've ever like done like sandstone or, or granite with yeah. all the stuff, like a celestial ring, a Varrock body, a Maxcape. Like you, you occasionally get these massive XP drops. Mm-hmm. Just based on pure RNG, where it's like, oh, here's 300 mining XP because you just got like four procs simultaneously. Yeah. Like things like that can be really engaging too. So you, there's got to be some element of like luck and this element of like, I don't know, getting lucky. But I, I don't know. Like there's so many things in my brain. Like I'm trying to like fully <laughs> expand on this idea. But like I think what's ultimately necessary is just having a good flow, feeling rewarded. And not being p- 
punished by looking away from your screen for a few seconds and like having these random events that are just so annoying and it feels like you're getting punished for not doing it it's just yeah totally i i completely agree with that yeah like you said giants foundry is a great example of that so many swords i just completely fucked by getting way too into a moment in like a show or a youtube video i was watching and then i glance back and i'm just like why am i even here yeah 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 <laughs> And skilling doesn't need to be like super punishing anyway. I feel like skilling should be the more chill thing. Yeah, definitely. Like, you, know, you don't need to make them both like PVM-esque. Like you don't need to be taking damage and stuff in a skilling method. But yeah, anyway, so just going all the way back to that first point is like if they were to come out with player design stuff, at least in my opinion, if I were to be offered like that opportunity, I would go so hard on trying to make something so like so fun so rewarding so satisfying but the problem mm. is is you would need things to be partly developed in order to just test it and i think right like Modelena uh in the like the project rebalance whole thing they they or i don't know if it was project rebalance it was some sort of blog post they were talking about potential rhythmic skilling updates that they want to come out with and one of the important things in my head is just you, you can drop the piece of content but you have in order for this new these new skilling methods that you've that one of them was like this three lane fishing thing like three lane fly fishing where you're just going down three different lanes and you know there's some going to be some sort of rhythm to it but yeah. the, the the most important thing is to be able to change it be willing to change it once once you've dropped it into the live game like drop it into live game and take immediate feedback Yes, that's insanely important. I feel like the first, like, you can't have any pride about your projects because, in the end, it's not about your enjoyment as the developer, or the person who wrote up the idea for it. Mm -hmm. It's about the people that are actually going to engage with it for, you know, sometimes hundreds of hours. Yeah. And there, there is this kind of masochistic view with a large portion of the player base. I don't know how large, but a portion yeah. of the player base definitely they almost see skilling as like skilling needs to be fucking miserable in order <laughs> in order for xp rates to be high enough they, it needs to be a a, a a miserable enough experience to grant that amount of xp i'm like why are we still Jeez. thinking that way like why are we thinking like just the most apm the most egregious the most stupid amount of clicks and the, the most miserable experience you can have that should be the thing granting the most xp like why are we even thinking in those terms it's, this whole game should be about fun right like why are we yeah and I'm, I'm i understand the perspective of like the people that truly do like are really into the high apm stuff because like i i do enjoy like some of the three tick skilling mm -hmm. activities and stuff i'm kind of weird like that i no, guess same. Oh, you do? Oh, thank god you. yeah okay i know most people when i talk to them they're like ew that's the worst thing i could ever imagine but yep. for me uh, yeah, I actually do like some of the three tick high APM stuff. And I think those options should be available. Like I said, Sepulchre is one of my favorite things ever. You really have to pay attention and watch where you're going. You don't zone out that much while doing it. Yep. And so I think there's a lot of room, though, for moving the XP per hour bar up between like right now, what's the best XP per hour you can get in woodcutting without doing tick manip? What is it like 70k per hour or something like that? Well, with forestry, Maybe. probably even way oh, higher. Oh, forestry, that's true. I don't know what it's like now that they've updated it. But yeah, yeah okay, so let's let's say it's like 90 to 100k XP per hour. Well, the difference between that and then like doing tick manip on teaks on Fossil Island, it's twice as much. It's over yep. 200,000 XP per hour. So the gap there is so big to put an activity that's equally as intense as three ticking or maybe a little bit less so, but in such a much more fun manner and make it more engaging and accessible to people who are think, willing to put in the effort, but yeah. don't want to just sit there clicking a log and a knife for, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the one of the best, me and so many people actually agree with this point if they give it a chance. Like two tick teaks, just hitting mm. a teak and then clicking the floor, clicking the teak, that is actually really fun because it feels like you're getting heavily rewarded for something mm. so simplistic, yet it has the rhythm and the flow to it. Like if you if you made it more rewarding, if you added something where like you don't have to drop the logs or you can stay in this same position, and you have a fucking log carrier servant, like a butler that's in the <laughs> overworld that can take your logs as you obtain them. You know, something where it's like, okay, now you're actually being rewarded. You're banking the logs that you're getting. You feel mm -hmm. like you're getting some, because that's another problem with a lot of gathering skills is the hot, if you want the maximum XP, you're losing money or you're gaining no money. Like what? what's up with yeah. that? Why? Imagine Sepulchre. If you wanted to hit the highest amount of XP, you just gain, like, you lose money or something. Like, that would be so stupid. Like, that's just yeah. so stupid. It's so backwards. 
That's why nobody does. Like the best method for sepulcher, they always say, "Well, sepulcher is ninety thousand XP per hour." It's like, yeah, if you don't loot anything, yeah, you but, get like. But, but the anything. top. But imagine they're making it worse and you lose money. Yeah, that yeah. sounds horrible. I mean, it's like black chinchampas. Imagine if you want, like, imagine black chinchampas was like super. Imagine you just lost money from doing it. It's just so like black chinchampas are so good because you're making hella good money and hella good XP. Yeah, and, why can't... and, and stuff like that needs to exist. Yeah, imagine if you had to pay a fee to get into the Black Chinchampa area, and then everyone you ca caught was like 500 GP or something. I mean, that'd all... be hor nobody would do that, right? Like that's horrible. Yeah, no, it's it's just. I feel like we can have the incentive go both ways, where you're getting good GP per hour and you're getting good XP per hour, and it's a fun, engaging method. And there's yeah, very I mean, few the envelopes been pushed so far with GP per hour. Like, how much can you make from running TOA now? Like, 15 to 20 mil an hour just by yourself or something? <sighs> That's wild. Yeah, probably. There's nothing wrong with a skilling method giving 2 mil gold an hour. Yeah. yeah no, in my humble opinion, yeah. Sepulchre is a beautiful example of everything that went right. Like, amazing XP per hour, super high engagement, super fun, and rewarding GP and XP wise. Just like, it's good in every aspect. Yeah, absolutely. They need to apply that to skills that are like, there's too many skills that are lacking in that department where you're engaged and you're making money. I feel like yep. smithing, like you just click on the anvil and wait for it to smith or you do Giants Foundry and hate yourself. <laughs> yeah. Or you, or you do gold and you lose everything. Yeah, there, there's so much to, there's so much. I, I mainly focus on gathering skills, generally yeah. speaking, because things like herb lore, I know they're planning on making like an herb lore minigame. Oh, I've, yeah, I did hear about that. I've never personally had that big of a problem of, like, the bank standing kind of viable skills being the sort of boring skills that they are where it's just do a 14 by 14 skill. Like I, I yeah, just, I get that. I guess smithing was an example because that one's just kind of egregious to where there's not really much purpose to it in most people's eyes. Mm -hmm. It's just there to be leveled. But, er, yeah, herb lore and processing and stuff like that, fletching. I think those are totally fine where they are. Yeah, it's hard to... It's, it's hard because like, I can definitely see there being value in a minigame. Um, mm -hmm. It's just it's hard to like balance it properly because you don't want herbs to now just become useless because now there's like a fun minigame that gives you a shit ton of... Right, that's a huge part of the economy that's fun for a lot of people, like yeah. doing herb runs, selling them, or you know making the potions. and. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, that'd be pretty depressing to see 50k herb XP per hour from a minigame and the entire market just dies for every herb that's not a brew or a super combat or whatever. Yeah, there's there's definitely smart ways to go about it, like dumping lesser herbs into the minigame system just to like generate XP. I don't know. It was a, it's yeah, like big there could be some fun ways to do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, vacancy has two questions. Will you continue the HCIM series as a regular Iron Man series if you die? Hopefully moving to tackle some more dangerous clogs. I'm looking at you, Revs and Void Waker. And number two, if you could have one item you haven't logged yet, what would it be? Ooh, those are good questions. So the hardcore, I would definitely continue if it became a normal Iron. As, as fun little fact, it's the only Iron Man I kind of ever actually played on is my hardcore. So I don't have anything else to look at that's like, oh, this one's better. I'll just drop the account. Like, it's still going to be above and beyond the best, like, account I have that's not a main. So mm -hmm. I definitely keep playing it if it died. As for the harder clogs, though, like revs, I, I want to go for Void Waker. I'll definitely do that. Revs is so bad, though, because doing that grind on my main, I think I'm, like, four times dry on getting anything from revs. Oh. I've done, like, 3,000 Skull Knights. I haven't even gotten an Avarice yet. And so it's pretty miserable. But, like... It's not even the going dry. It's just like there's so many PKers that AHK and such nowadays that it's the fun of it is like getting the log out fast enough, you know. But I've had it happen to me at uh, revs on my main where it's like the tick they're logged in, they appear and you're tally blocked like almost instantly. I don't like that. It kind of ruins the fun for so me. Obnoxious. Because if I die to an actual person, that's awesome. I'm like, congrats to them. They did great. But if I die to somebody who's effectively botting, mm -hmm. it's just ruined the entire. 10,000 hour experience I've had yep. for nothing, you know, so I just don't like that idea. So I'll probably go for Void Waker. I don't think I'm doing revs though. What was the second question? Was there a second um, question? Yeah, if you, if you could have one item you haven't logged yet, what would it be? Ooh, that's a good question. I would probably just take the 2K challenge mode cape because I don't really like chambers that much. So yeah, that's, that's <laughs> just fair. take that and run. <laughs> yeah. 
I like Tob and Toa, but yeah, if I could skip Chambers, that'd be great. It's like one of those questions where it's like, no matter what, like it just feels, it's just like I don't, I don't want a free collection log. Like I, that yeah. sounds nice to just have it be done with, but ultimately it's like I just cheated it. Like, yeah, exactly. Fun. Yeah, it's fun to flex, but like that's why I hate the LMS capes. Is pretty much like ninety nine percent of people who have the thousand LMS wins cape just cheesed it with like twenty accounts or whatever, or just you, I don't know if you still can billion yeah. bots because there's just the whole thing is flooded with bots. Oh yeah, that's me. Like eighty of my wins were all just bot wins. Yeah, I, mean, just... I have a hundred wins. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like what is so stupid. It's, it's really stupid. Back in the day, you had that though. They knew you were insane at PKing. Yeah. No, I mean LMS. Like I, I actually really enjoy LMS, and I feel like I get better. Like I don't really care about PKing, but I do have, I do get like the addiction of like, okay, mm. LMS becomes really addicting. You just keep running back in. It's like fucking. It's literally TikTok. It's like um, it's just like yeah. as soon as you die or as soon as you win, you just run back in. You're just like I'm going back in. Um, but I, I. And one of those cloggers that I, I don't even care about getting this clog done like as fast as humanly possible or just like get it out of the way. It's like I actually want to enjoy myself at LMS and kill real people. Like I, I mm -hmm. genuinely find the minigame fun. And like I, I had people in my clan saying like, dude, guys, everyone go do LMS right now because it's just like just a billion <laughs> bots. Like, it's just, like every year you're just yeah. killing bots. I'm like, dude, that literally sounds miserable. Like that just does not sound like even enjoyable. Yeah, it, it no, only sounds enjoyable if you it. only care about a collection log number, and I just no, I, I can't. Yeah, that kind of did ruin my LMS experience a bit. Was aiming for the log slots themselves as opposed to like just, experiencing. Like, I feel like I got actually pretty decent at PKing through it. Like, I was able to actually kill real people over time. Mm -hmm. I think one time I beat like the rank eleven LMS guy in a fight once, and I was really proud of that. Hell but yeah. Yeah, but so it's cool learning that skill and getting better. And honestly, it helped me with like switching faster and being able to do prayers and spells and switching all really quickly. But man, yeah, the goal of getting the log slots does kind of get in the way of the journey of enjoying it. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, like for me, the way I've decided, and again, I'm not a dedicated clogger. Like I have like 1180 slots. Mm -hmm. um, but with LMS, it's like whenever I get the LMS addiction and whenever they clear out some of the bots, I can kill real players. I'll go to LMS, enjoy my time. And I think I'm at like 200 and something wins. But nice. it's just, I'm not going to rush this at all. Yeah, 263 wins. I just, I, I just yeah, can't focus on the to do it that way. Yeah. 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 When you get too focused on the end goal, it's so much easier to burn out. And that kind of applies for me for any grind at all. Like I was, I set a goal my this month to like do fifty uh, TOA runs at four hundred, and I've done like ten, and I'm just <laughs> dreading the thought of doing more. But if I just like picked it up and ran a couple every time I felt like it, yeah, I would have probably been so much further into this goal than I am now. Yeah, that was so. Oh, it just bothers me. I feel like once I get in there, I enjoy myself, but just pressing the button to go into that raid is so hard knowing the monkey room <laughs> yeah. is right there. I know. <laughs> it's I always the first room I do. Same. Yep. And then you fuck up on it. And you're like, nah, and hell no, I'm done. Yep. I'm logging out like this <laughs> over. Exactly. God damn. You're so right. Fucking monkey room, man. It's so bad. <laughs> All right. Um, Kuna asks, can you do a sub series and get GM on your account? That's a good question as well. I've, I, I've, I like, uh, it's are one you? I'm are really you master? Torn on. Are you elite? I'm almost master tier. Okay. But the problem is, is I just don't enjoy doing combat tasks like at all. Like at first, it's I thought it was going to be really fun. Yeah, it's more, it's just like, I don't feel like I'm getting like any satisfaction out of learning some of these things like when it's a boss i enjoy mm -hmm. i do all the combat tasks and i have fun but i jump into something like i don't know corrupt gauntlet where i'm kind of just like mid on it i don't really enjoy it i don't really hate it mm -hmm. and then i'm sat there resetting over and over for a speed run and i'm just like i would i would rather be doing anything else right now so that what i can get five points towards my new cute helmet okay yeah. cool dude i don't I'll, want that i'll be honest like okay so gm was obviously mm -hmm. a pain in the ass yeah um but the and i got it like you know a couple months after like the initial release because i just i couldn't focus on anything else in the game i needed to get my zuck helmet i'm just one of those yeah one of those players like just, you just need it like just can't and i knew i could do it and i had the like, streamer favoritism where like i could just get a team if i needed to for these tasks right right so i had it good but dude the cg tasks were actually like they were the most annoying but 
in hindsight, they were the most fun I think I had. Yeah. It was so addicting resetting for some reason. It was one of the, it, was, it felt like LMS again. It's just like resetting. It was just, I just needed to keep fucking going and trying to get that perfect RNG run. I actually had a great time and I felt like I actually learned stuff. It was. I mean, that's good at least. That is good. So that's funny you say CG because that was actually the, it, it was annoying, but mm-hmm. I think it was honestly one of the most fun things I did. And I think the one that actually burned me out was a Spory speed run. I spent like three <laughs> or four hours doing because it's such a formula. You have to do it in this order. So I do it and then I just hit shit. And then I okay, reset this three or four hours later. I'm like, oh, I think I got it. And I was off by like two seconds. I'm like, yep, no, I'm done. So I got to wait a whole day for it to grow again. Yeah. Like, no, I'm yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. No, G- GM something where it's like you have to. You have to really want that Zuck helm if you want to get yeah. GM. Like you just got to yeah it's, i just gotta feel the drive people have to flex it to me enough to where i get annoyed and i really want to have it yeah as soon as it's drilled in your head like it got i was never planning on going for a zuck helmet and then like a month pass and i see all these people getting it and i'm like fuck like i, I can't focus on anything else now like god damn it i gotta get this and i hated it i hated yes. grinding it but i had to that's me with the blood torf up i'm not doing it until they add the kit to the log i don't know why that's not in the collection log oh yeah kind of like protesting it a little bit yeah no but i mean i guess i mean zuck helmets on the log either though like should like these... yeah but it's not a drop you get you that's know? that's true yeah you get the drop from the boss that's why i don't you don't that even need to put true. in the boss section put in the miscellaneous i just want to see the pop yeah, up when you're you right it. that should i mean it's untradeable anyway so you, yeah if you've done it you're gonna get it unlocked but yeah exactly but you, you want you want the collection log pop-up so you're just gonna hold off right that's your i excuse. do exactly that, that's yeah, i need to excuse. see the pop-up uh-huh. that's yeah, yeah it's just an excuse let's be honest i'm scared of duke <laughs> it's gonna spit acid too many times Dude, and freak duke, me out duke was actually fucking brutal if you don't like get all the tiles marked and you know what you're doing like it, it becomes a shit show because you have to like constantly be like right in front of duke to, for him not to mage you but you're getting stacked out it's just i was one <laughs> hp like on the run i did i uploaded it. i got one hp like twice i think oh my god so bad but that's exciting i like doing the challenging stuff where it's just the actual uh what's it called the actual content itself is designed to be hard yes but it's like the extra restrictions of the task Mm -hmm. it it almost feels like i'm just doing like a fan-made challenge list you're right like those those awakened challenges are so fun because like just you could brute force it try to even brute force it's like do whatever you possibly can to finish this and you'll get the Mm. you'll get the thing that's that's exciting yeah, I like that. Those things really aren't brute forcible either. Those things are fucking brutal. Just, those, <laughs> those awakened bosses, like they nailed it. It's fair, punishing, and just short and sweet. Just like do it. Yeah, from what I've seen, they look really fun and really satisfying to finish up as well. They are. Okay. Let's see. Fawns asks, "Who is your favorite bingo team member?" Anybody but Fawns, honestly. <laughs> Fawns always gets that. So I've played bingo yeah. a couple times. I've done a couple bingo events. And so I have some team members that are pretty consistent that join up with me. And Fawns, I love him. You know, I don't hate Fawns or anything. But every bingo, he gets burnt out like three days in. And then he's just gone for like five days. And then he comes back on the last day, like primed and ready to go when we're already in fifth place. I'm sorry, Fawns, <laughs> to call you out like that. But, you know, you kind of put yourself in the spotlight. <laughs> Okay, DNA <laughs> asks, what are you dreading the most on the clog journey? Also, will someone ever actually finish the clog? I know you hate the word clog, and I, everyone keeps it's saying okay. clog. It's okay. No, it's just, fine. You, like, ears are bleeding at this point, aren't they? I'll live with it. It's become like a joke at this point. <laughs> I say it in my stream. I'm like, can we please not say clog? And it just makes them say it more, so <laughs> there's no stopping it. Uh, the item I'm dreading the most, I think, the, the so there's a lot of items that I hate and i just don't want to go for and i just won't go for but of the things that i actually kind of want to get i'd say probably the 2k toa cape i actually want to get that but uh, god the grind to get there it sounds it just feels like it's going to be rough just the burnout i face because it's not that i don't like toa it's just there's so many things in there that make me not want to continue doing it but then the next day i'm like oh i could run some toa it's not like i ever hate it forever but yeah what was the second question again Will, will somebody ever actually finish the clog Oh, probably not. Probably I mean, not. So you're saying there's probably a chance. Not. I mean, there's a chance if somebody can get a really good bot running. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like I, I see someone like Marnie, right? That's mm-hmm. super lucky on third age. And it's awesome. He, he's only got one dupe, right? And mm-hmm. he's got nine pieces or whatever. But what happens to your mind 
when you like 15 items in and you get your fourth dupe third age in a row and as you spent the past eight months on that like i just don't see any human being being able to realistically continue trudging through that like because it's still fresh for marnie marnie only finished like the rest of the sections a couple months ago or something yeah. and so i just i just don't like okay obviously it's possible anything's possible but like some dude could accidentally stumble upon full third age completion and 10 masters i don't know but I don't think it's ever going to happen, no. Especially with new content being added all the time. All Jagex has to do is make Grandmaster Clues a thing with new Third Age and you're fucked. Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> Which e- I hope they do. Even just adding one new Third Age. Just add Third Age boots to the normal thing. Yep. Like you instantly yep. have a, a whole other Third Age to go for. Like, good luck. Yeah, and I'm not one of those... I, I, I don't mean to trash talk anybody who feels this way, but I'm not ever one to gatekeep things being added to the log. I want them to add as many fun and interesting things as they can like Same. i don't know anything as stupid as like the goblin book that goblins drop it's the mm-hmm. only creature that drops it fuck it throw it in the collection log that sounds fun yeah yep i'm with you know you how exciting there. it'd be as a new player to be killing goblins and see a pop-up collection log goblin book you're like what what is that that'd be great yeah i'm totally with you there yeah so i i'd love just more stuff make it harder to complete i don't care i don't think most people even the top collection loggers give a shit about completing it i don't think it's actually possible well, po- the asterisk it yeah. is possible but yeah it's not gonna happen yeah it's yeah, not, yeah. Exactly. maybe in like 70 years maybe when like school fortune 2.0 comes out and people yeah just pay real money for collection logs when marnie's great granddaughters pass it on to her child <laughs> the account you know then they can get the <laughs> final third age piece oh my god <laughs> okay um randall or hydroelectric asks how did it feel to single-handedly save hundreds of orphans uh, it felt pretty good, Randall. When I dove through the air, dolphin diving, dodging all 80 bullets shot by the mafia at me at that one singular moment to cover a grenade that was about to blow up the entire orphanage, it felt great. And the fact that they were able to reattach all my limbs was great, too. So it felt good. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that one, that one felt great, huh? All the limbs it was satisfying. Um, yeah. The Ultimate asks, what do you miss about the game pre-clog? nothing <laughs> i don't think i don't think anything got worse because of the collection log i think it's great That's i good. see no i see zero negatives to it existing honestly a lot of people say it's bad because it incentivizes people to grind it out too much but that okay delete old school runescape if you feel that way honestly yeah, straight up delete it please yeah, um, yeah i'm begging you yeah please this is a cry for help <laughs> this, is, this is not a joke guys this is a cry for help <laughs> all right how nice is dave really Oh, he's super nice. I met up with Dave in real life. I went to his 100,000 subscriber party at his house. And uh, he's super nice. His wife, who organized the party, is super nice. She invited me in secret without him knowing. So it was a surprise to him that I was there. Uh, he was pissed. He's like, what the fuck? He was so mad. He decked me right away. <laughs> and then he kissed me. It was really weird. I didn't know what to think. But, you know, it was a good time. Oh. Nah, for real though, he's he's super nice, and they're they're very nice people, and it was very fun. They even let me stay the night in their living room. Damn, I just wish they were a little quieter. They kept me up all night. Yeah. Yeah. Oh geez, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> oh I'm sorry, God. Dave. <laughs> are there any are there updates you would take a tomahawk land attack missile to? Almost, any oh so yeah. any update I would just demolish and yeah. delete from the game. Uh-huh. Ooh, that's a good question. That is a really good question. Um, oh, geez, I don't know. There's not a lot of stuff in this game that I truly hate or think is bad enough that it needs to be deleted. Really, aerial fishing? Just that, I mean, that, I that think has it's fine aerial that it's in there. it. Just aerial attack. Just aerial yeah. Attack I mean, that's that's cool for the lineup. But I I think there's people that enjoy it, and honestly, mm. I've heard it's better on mobile. Mm. So you just tap everything. It's like a little you know cookie clicker mobile game true, kind of thing. True, so. True. I don't know. I think there's positives to pretty much every piece of content. I can't wait to see all the comments. People reminding me of the worst things in this game that I've forgotten about. Yeah. I mean, I don't M- know. MTA needs a look at badly. MTA needs some that? love. That's true. Oh, yeah. You, you green logged it? Yeah, and I'm getting I'm there on my so hardcore sorry. as well. I'm so yeah, it's, sorry. it's bad. It's bad. Like, it, like literally just like the, the simplest things could help that so much. Like something like telekinetic grab where you cast telekinetic grab and you're not fucking glued to your tile. You can actually just move yeah. around. Through. Like that would be instantly so much nicer. Quality of life update to MTA would be one of the best things for the game, especially because pretty much everyone does it for Bones to Peaches. Like every every one of us imbeciles has sat there for six hours 
watching the stupid statue drag across the floor, alking useless shit. It, it's bad. Like we've all done it. It is bad. But I, I, oh, man, I just forgot. I, I don't know if I could delete anything from the game. I guess I'd say uh, trouble brewing. What's the fucking point? <laughs> Why does it exist? Yep. No, I take it back. Soul Wars. I would delete Soul Wars. Yes. Completely. See, I I know, just remembered it. You know, I've never actually participated in a single game of Soul Wars. I actually don't even know the objective of the game. Okay, it, so you just like. No, I, mean, I don't even. You're care. supposed you even to do to all me. this shit, but it just revolves into it. Just devolves into like a cluster of just madness and being frozen in one spot for. It's so boring. <laughs> now you know what though. I had fun the playing RS3 Soul Wars pads. one time. Oh really? Yes. It was in leagues when everyone was oh, turbo yeah. overpowered. That did was actually like, fun. Did, did you get like two mil XP? Like some something about like there was like some prayer XP. Oh, I didn't even something. do it for the XP. Okay. I did it for the crates so I could get um like ruby bolts made and stuff because I, I used the range build. Yeah, but it's so fun. Everyone attacking each other with two ticks. You got the one guy with like max mage just barraging like fifties on people every two ticks. It was actually fun. All right, Gnome Child asks question for Shelby. Big fan, by the way. Thoughts on Cheetos mac and cheese? Stop! Don't eat that. If you're out there listening, don't eat that. All right, I I made a video on my second channel where I reviewed all the flavors of Cheetos mac and cheese, <laughs> and like they weren't bad, but man, I felt like shit. That night. I was like glued to the toilet for like three hours, Bro. and my stomach hurt. I didn't eat it all the next day. I felt so horrible. You I know what? Real talk though, I've I, I've only tried the hot Cheeto Mac. Okay, that, that like one's that. probably fine. I like that, that one's probably. I, fine. I, I enjoyed that one. Um, it's one of those things where it's like it's like a it's like a straight up comfort food. I mean, it's literally just mm -hmm. spicy mac and cheese. And you put yeah. and, and like if you put a can of tuna in there or something. Like I love tuna mac, so Ooh, like you put a can of yes. tuna in there, like you're you're. I mean, that shit's gonna fuck your stomach up, but it's still good. <laughs> Yeah. Good. I think it was the jalapeno one. I don't know what sketchy jalapeno powder yeah, they were you, using. You don't want to know what's in there. Yeah. I don't. I'm good. I just can't touch it anymore. It's like permanent scarring That's in my good. stomach. That's good. Um, <laughs> all right. This is from Quietly Grinding. What's your opinion on how the landscape of clog hunting has changed? I've personally loved to see people get more and more competitive and really go for clogging for the sake of clogging. <laughs> So much okay, clogging. Well, <laughs> clogging for the sake of clogging. I really hope that's not a sentence anyone spoke before, <laughs> like now, basically, in human history. <laughs> just slight, slight side tangent. Do you ever say something and wonder if you're actually the first human being to ever utter those words in that order? Because I do that all the time. No, I, to be honest, no, because I, I would take it to the very extreme, where like I would, I would almost measure it off of like how you actually pronounce it like you know if it was some way to mm. perfectly accurately measure anything everything's yeah. unique like nothing nothing would ever be duplicated true. you know what i mean I, I would take it to that weird extreme where it's just like any everything you've ever done is the first time it's ever been done like just no that's matter true. what that's a good point that is a good point i was just thinking you know nobody's probably ever said like pumpernickel berry abyssal whip flying tuna or whatever yeah nobody ha ever yeah. has yeah and, and, you guys again, just the world first. and again i'm just the obnoxious person that even if somebody were to have they would have misprint just slightly yeah. something a little off yeah i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> for just ruining the whole thing for everybody but. yeah it's okay we'll come up with something new yeah. but what was, what was the question do i how do i feel about the landscape of collection logging changing yeah, uh like i mean competitiveness i guess yeah so i'm happy for people to play their own way like i don't get really you should offended. you should be judgmental of all right i'm sorry i'll yeah. take it back anyone who tries to get collection log slots past <laughs> what am i again 92 anyone with more collection log slots than me is a fucking loser anyone, that, anyone with less is a noob that there we go that's it and anyone yeah. who's exactly me is a fucking copycat they are i yeah. like get your own get a life yeah. be yourself come straight on straight up no nah, but for real i'm happy for people that want to do it competitively i will never see it that way um I just think it's a fun activity and I personally recommend everyone do it for fun. And honestly, with the way that collection logging is, it's there's not much point to being competitive because this is an RNG based game. Mm -hmm. Like being competitive for skilling high scores when a new skill drops, that makes sense. It's all about how good you are at the methods and keeping it up consistently and how many months off work you can take. But with collection logging, it is just it is pure RNG. Like what if what if Marnie had done 10,000 master clues with no third age, you know, Basilicus would be pointing and laughing at him from his mountaintop. Yep. 
Yep. So I, I just don't I just don't see it as something that's healthy to be competitive. But I'm not the judge of what's healthy in yeah, your who, life. Who cares about healthy? Fun. We're all going to die one day. We're literally play RuneScape. Yeah. 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 I mean, our our day might be sooner if we keep playing this much, but it's okay. <laughs> that's why I got the standing desk. I got a standing. Oh desk. hell yeah! It's, it was, great. it's 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 one of the electronic ones. You just like tap. Yeah, and it, just it adjusts. Up. Yeah. yeah. I have one of those too. It's, really nice. I, oh, it's, they're so great. You first get it and you use it a lot. And then like over time, it's just, man, the amount of time that <laughs> I, I will go weeks without even standing once. It's easy to lose the rhythm well, of it. But I try I try to do like a certain amount of steps a day. So I'll stand here and like jog good. in place. Oh, nice. Yeah, no, I think it's, I mean, because I'll, I'll go outside most days anyway. So it's not like I'm yeah. just in my complete degenerate state like I used to. Because, yeah, I used to be five years ago. Same. I'd sit in my fucking desk for like like straight up. 12 hours just sitting yeah same order a pizza right before i go to sleep too just fucking <laughs> yeah just <laughs> could be as, as i think we all had that phase <laughs> yeah i mean you we're need in our to, enlightened phase now yeah yeah like you you need I, i'm glad i had that phase though because you can't always have that like when you've entered your because i'm like i'm 28 now and like mm-hmm. i'm getting older to the point where like if you, if i were to try to do that shit in the next few years like it, i'm actually just destroying my body Dude, i could take absolutely. it in my early 20s i could take it Oh my God. That's so true. Like my wife and I, we've been trying to like lose weight and be healthier and you know, Mm -hmm. we're 27. So like eating things or drinking things that I used to when I was younger, like a teenager, it ravages you so much more. And it's like, I was told this was going to start happening in the thirties. I'm only 27. They didn't tell me about this. And also since I've lost weight, because I've lost like 50 or so pounds over the past few years, Wow. I can't eat like anywhere near as much as I used to. I used to be able to eat like at least five or six slices of pizza but if i eat like two now i feel stuffed and like ill yeah it's no, crazy it's, you're, yeah no definitely it's well that that's insane i didn't actually realize uh you had lost that much weight congrats thank you Did, yeah. is, does it feel easy to like sustain that now because i know a lot of people like a lot of people struggle with the rebound like a lot of people just rebound immediately back if it, it's usually if they struggled losing the weight in the first place yeah so like i had tried a bunch before like different things but mm-hmm. for me it really came down to just like logging every single thing i ate into an app you know trying to consistently walk and run more mm-hmm. like those two combined made it a lot easier and once i had logged everything for like four or five months it just kind of became second nature it wasn't really difficult anymore yeah, I feel like logging, I've said this before in like previous casts, like you log for a season and mm-hmm. even if you never want to log your calories ever again, you still know kind of pretty much like a rough estimate of what you ate. But if you've Absolutely, never yeah. counted calories before, you're just like, I don't even know what I just ate. I don't know how many calories, but like when I eat, like I haven't counted calories in like almost a decade and it's like, wow, yeah, I still have a rough estimate of like how much i'm consuming just based on weight based on just like reading the nutrition facts of things and just kind of gauging but ultimately yeah. in my personal life it's like i i can feel if i'm eating too much like it's just it's like intuition mm-hmm. it's like my body and and i weigh myself daily too so that also helps obviously yeah, like it helps fluctuates sure. but but over like weeks and stuff you can tell if you're eating mm-hmm. too much yeah i i agree and especially once you've gotten past the point because you know, your stomach can stretch and get smaller over time and such. And so to get to the point where you eat a ton, you have to remember that it took, you know, like it takes a while to stretch your stomach out to be able to get to the point where you can even feasibly eat enough calories to gain a lot of weight, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it takes that like same amount or maybe even more. I don't know the exact exact, exact time scale of it for it to like shrink back down. Mm-hmm. So it's that struggle time where it's still big enough to hold like way too much food. And then the between that and the time where it's small enough, that's the hardest part. But once it's shrunk enough, it's kind of hard for me to overeat anymore, honestly. Yeah. One of the coolest parts as well about kind of like just having a sort of restriction on the calories because what, what's so easy, like if you want to get fat, you just stop thinking about what you're eating. You just eat whatever you yeah. feel like whenever. But the one of the nicest things about actually kind of having self-control and restricting is like food tastes better when you're actually 100%. hungry like yeah <laughs> you're actually a little bit hungry it just tastes good dude when you haven't had like a pizza in weeks or something oh, i know oh it's the best i know but it's it slaps 
So, and I don't know about you, but I stopped eating like pretty much everything sugary. And now when I have like ice cream or something, it's, oh my God, it's like overwhelming how sweet <laughs> yeah. it is now. Yeah. I've, I've never, I really want to do that at some point. I, mm. I never entirely cut out sugar. Um, I don't know why it's just like, it's such an easy thing to do and it's so healthy to just cut that out or like really yeah. minimize it. Because, yeah, like, sugar just causes so many problems. Like, even me personally, like, I'll get, like, inflamed from just eating too much sugar and stuff. And it's just like, why am I doing this to myself still? It's just so easy to eat a ton of it because it doesn't fill you up, like, at all. I know, and it tastes at least so for good. Me. Yeah, I know. I hate and, that. And it's, it's addicting. Like, it's straight up just mm -hmm. sugar addiction. I have it. Yeah. Because as soon as you stop eating sugar so much, you <laughs> become used to it. And you're like, oh, this is totally fine. Yep, exactly. That's a hard one. That was definitely probably the hardest one, but that was the biggest one I think that was holding mm -hmm. me back was just that impulse. Like, because, you know, it's not filling, it's addicting. You want to eat so much more of it. Once you start eating it, it just it gets in the way so much for me, yep. at least. Yep. Yeah. I've, I've, I have certain addictions that I'll go into like seasons of. One of the things I've been really proud of myself for was I haven't eaten chips or any sort of like bagged carbs basically in mm -hmm. like six months like which is wow I, I used to be like really addicted to just like if i would go go to a grocery store or something i'm getting a bag of chips like i'm getting something like, yeah I, I need some munchies you know but i haven't done that I'm in, still a, like in a that. long time I, I try to i try to lean more towards the ones that i'll be like that'll have at least a little bit of nutrition you know yeah, have yeah. some fiber some protein yeah yeah that's a vice i haven't been able to kick yet that and like diet soda i still drink one every like day or two i drink monster ultras just those, <laughs> yeah i mean there's zero sugar but like you know there's some shit that's it's probably affecting my gut health like yeah probably pretty, pretty badly in some sort of sense but but they're good they're really good and yeah it honestly like i will take um i will take like these caffeine tolerance like breaks mm -hmm. i'll just like i need to rebuild my tolerance and so i'll just go like you know three weeks without caffeine it's always the worst the first four days i have like fucking headaches yeah, but I get past it. And then when I go back on caffeine, because one of the things I've noticed is I always have this like ultimate goal, like I'm going to permanently stop this thing. And whenever yeah. I try to make an extreme thing like that, it never ends up working. It's just yeah. like, this is just stupid. Like I'm, I might, it may as well just be really mindful of it instead and be able to have it in my life, but just very low quantities, just like here and there. But with caffeine, Whenever I take those three week tolerance breaks, which I'm probably about to really soon because the caffeine's actually affecting my fucking sleep at this point. But um when you get back on it, it's amazing. Like caffeine just a little bit of caffeine just makes your day just pop. <laughs> like Yeah. Just, I definitely yeah. It's much better to have like one or two little vices that don't harm you that much than to try to give it up and go right back to how you were before. Yeah. But it's funny that you mentioned the caffeine, actually. I had the exact opposite experience where I mm. kind of stopped drinking it for a while. And now I have like a caffeine intolerance. Like if I drink caffeine at all in any normal amount, I have like panic attacks and I get heart palpitations and stuff. What? Even just a, even like a, like a Diet Coke or something? Yeah. If I just drink like a can of Diet Coke. Wow. Yeah. And it, it happens like, a, I don't know, probably like starts like two hours after I drink it and it just lasts like the whole evening. Wow, that's weird. So, so I have to drink caffeine free everything. I mean, that's kind of a good thing if you can just like live and have enough energy and stuff and feel. Yeah. But with me, like, I could easily go caffeine free to some extent, but the problem is, is like I like like I live stream, and mm -hmm. there's something I've just noticed is if if I drink a caffeinated beverage before a live stream and I don't have much tolerance, like. Mm -hmm my energy is just through the roof and I enjoy my stream more. Like I feel like I'm more energetic. I, I talk more. I just, and that is ultimately what's like keeping the live stream more entertaining and stuff. And so it's like this vice that's like hard to kick because it's, it's completely in a way like helping me be more entertaining. It's just like, a, yeah, I don't know. It sucks. So like whenever I've really tried to stop, like I've, I've taken like those tolerance breaks for three weeks and by two to three weeks in, I've noticed, and maybe it's just all in my head, but I don't think it is. I've, I've noticed, like, if I go live, I just don't have the energy I, I usually have. And I'm just kind of, like, a slightly more sluggish with things. No, I think it's true, for sure. I miss being able to drink caffeine. Yeah, because it does. It gives you so much more energy. and makes It makes you, like, your full potential longer. 
you know, how easy it is to like lose that full energy you yes. when you start streaming. But if you have caffeine or something, then you feel like you can maintain that for a longer yeah. period of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I can't do that much anymore. I can only stream for like four hours and then I feel like, yeah, I'm just not at my peak anymore. That's, I mean, that's me as well. Even with caffeine, I'll go four, yeah. to, four, four to five hours and I'm like, oh shit, I'm hitting this like kind of plateau. If I, if I keep pushing through, I'll actually be mm -hmm. good. But it's like this hour like plateau where I'm just like constantly thinking like I should just end. Yeah. I should end. I what should is end. with that? Yeah, it's, it's exactly that. And then you hit your second wind and you're like, damn, how was I even thinking about yeah, that? Yeah, like I'm, I'm good now. Right now. <laughs> yeah. What is with that? Like, that happens to me every time. It's weird. But so what exactly caught, I don't know if you're like want to talk about this, like what exactly caused the panic attacks? Did you always have like anxiety when it came to caffeine or did it happen randomly? Like just no, I used to be completely fine drinking it. I'd drink like several sodas or like a monster or whatever in fact like the thing i miss the most is the java monsters those are my favorite oh thing yeah ever. yeah but uh i don't know it just kind of started and i didn't realize that it was caused by caffeine so i thought that i was just having a really bad anxiety problem or that i was having heart problems like one morning i actually called an ambulance at like three in the morning because my oh, heart shit. was beating it was beating like 150 160 beats per minute and it wasn't stopping and so the ambulance gets here and they check me out and they're like, you're fine. It could be like SVT or something. And he's like, I, I've had that happen to me before. But I so he's like, you're fine. You're not going to die or anything. I could bring you to the hospital, but they're just going to tell you you're fine. So I went back in the house and I sat on the couch and just watched Family Feud for like five hours. And the whole, I'm sitting there relaxed. I'm not even freaking out anymore, like in my conscious mind at least. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm just sitting there watching, you know, Steve Harvey make stupid jokes or whatever. And my heart is just bum, 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 bum for like five hours until I pass out from exhaustion. Holy shit. And that was from was just a minor amount of caffeine or was that like you? Oh, you no, I probably drank like I probably drank like a large Coke or something like that beforehand. OK. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I, it just kind of felt like it came out of nowhere. And then eventually I discovered that it was due to the caffeine. Just incidentally, I was kind of thinking about it. You know, I had gone without caffeine for a little while. And I was like, oh, that hasn't happened in a while. And then I drank a soda and it happened that night. I kind of pieced it together. <laughs> that is, I feel like I do get minor effects, like anxiety from caffeine. Oh, I know for a fact because, um, like, I can't smoke weed anymore because I get, I, mm -hmm. I will straight up just have horrible anxiety. Just horrible. Yeah. Um. So I've been, like, weed free for, like, almost a year at this point, And, like. Nice. Yeah, but what was interesting is like the ca after I started getting really bad anxiety from weed, I started noticing it with caffeine as well. So if I really? if I really overdo my caffeine, um, especially when I was first having anxiety, uh, super anxiety with weed, when I first stopped, like my dreams got really wild because I, I don't know if you've ever smoked weed, like uh, like on like I've like, done I've done edibles once. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, when when you start like consuming THC chronically, like you stop mm. having dreams. Most oh, that's people, freaky. Most people do. Like you, you just you're just so out. Like you, yeah. when you pass out, you're out, and you don't remember the dream. Maybe you're still dreaming, and you just don't remember it. Yeah. But as soon as you stop, your dreams become hella vivid, like wild. Like it's just like, wow. like this is too much. Like I would wake up at like three or four in the morning and just be sweating. It's just like holy fuck. Like I'm having the most Jeez. intense dream of all time. And then yeah. I realized even after stopping caffeine or sorry, after stopping weed, I was drinking caffeine and the same symptoms would come up where like if I overdid my caffeine consumption, I would drink like 300 milligrams or so mm -hmm. in the day, my dreams would become hella vivid again. And it was causing me anxiety. Like I knew my heart rate was up and everything else. And so you saying that, like, I don't know, like I, I want to get to the point where I don't need caffeine at all, but I, it's just like there's something like it doesn't negatively affect me enough to like warrant the completely stopping. But I need to get yeah. to a point where I can just lightly enjoy it because that would be that would be optimal is like not have it at all. And if I want to start a stream, just drink like 50 milligrams or something, something that's yeah, just really just like light. A, it's like a little thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then stay with that and don't overdo it and be able to not have to start pumping up those numbers over time because that's always what happens yeah that's it was weird what you mentioned about the uh really vivid dreams when you stopped mm -hmm. smoking weed because the only time i ever i've ever done an edible i had like the most vivid thoughts like after i'd taken it when i would think about something like i tried thinking about like a boat and i could literally see it in front of me yeah like and see down to the details i could like see the cracks and the boards and like i was holy like holy shit, shit. 
<laughs> it's freaky dude yeah no that, that's mind-altering substances man they are yeah I've, I've had my experiences and you can the mind is vast it is oh yeah it is crazy how i don't know like we we do not understand our brains at all like just, yeah no not even remotely i mean i've even noticed especially recently i've been really like fascinated with dreams and just like the mind in general over the past like year especially but like mm -hmm. dude it is wild when you're laying in bed trying to go to sleep and there is like this transition that takes place if you're aware enough if like if you're focusing enough and you don't immediately fall asleep there's like this slight transition where it's like you can literally just see shit like I'm yeah not, i'm not a visible like i'm not like um i don't know what the term is it's like when you can when you like you can imagine things lucid and, dreamer no not lucid dreaming it's like people that are uh, um what's the term i'm thinking of it's like you know we're like if i said think of an apple like there's some people that will literally see oh, an apple yeah. in their mind's eye like they'll just fucking yeah. see a vivid apple some people barely see it and some people just can't even see anything like yes like a, yeah a, a, a whole like range um and i feel like i'm really in the middle probably on the lower end of like barely being able to see it but i can kind of imagine an apple in my head right now but mm. when you're falling asleep that becomes that can become so incredibly vivid even before you've fallen asleep and if you wake up right beforehand it kind of like fades out again yeah but if you can remember it's like bro yeah you can you can just make up shit in your mind you can literally like create a fucking movie in your mind like that's full color 3d like everything it's just mm -hmm. it is crazy to think of. do you ever have it where you're you're experiencing one of those and something goes wrong and you jolt up in bed all the time dude just... yeah like where you trip on a stair or something like that yes. happens to me so much too yeah yes. okay um we've covered all the topics and we started getting into the mystical land of conversation <laughs> but uh so shelby i've uh thoroughly enjoyed our conversation today we went over three hours yeah um, me too this was just absolutely fantastic yeah this is this is really nice and i actually had a, a really great time i'm I sad i didn't get you on like way earlier so i'll have to get you on again to make up for it hopefully uh in a year or so we can have a little catch up and who knows maybe sailings come out we can talk about that or something yes for sure we'll be talking about how great or horrible it is yeah <laughs> So before we end, though, I'm going to ask you for a few shout outs from the community. So if you have any, uh, I know I'm just bringing this, uh, springing this up upon you right now. So if you haven't thought of, thought of any, that's that's your fault. I'm oh, no, kidding. that's fine. Yeah, I know it is my fault. I should have been more prepared. <laughs> Honestly, I'm embarrassed right in the cheeks. But I will say some yeah. shout outs to the community that I will give. Please check out some underrated YouTubers that I truly enjoy in the old school space. Check out, uh, well, Lone Jim Rat, we actually mentioned. He has a great collection log series. Uh, check out Potato Hime. She streams on Twitch. Very cool. And Hona, who you actually had as a guest as well on your podcast. And I've had, once, po and I've had Potato and I've had Lone Jim Rat on as guests too, believe it or yeah, not. Yeah, I saw the one yeah. with Jim Rat and Hona. I did not know that Potato was on your Yeah, cast. she was on with Sid O. One. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to watch that one later. Mm -hmm. And then there's one more. Oh, yeah, check out Krill in it as well. He also has a great series. These people are very underappreciated. I definitely recommend you check them all out. Awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, guys, for those still listening, down in the description, I'm going to have Shelby's links, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter. Is there anything else you want linked? No, I think that's about everything. And you all better subscribe. I'm going to cry. <laughs> Thank you guys all for listening. Shelby, I appreciate your time once again coming on. And uh, if you guys want to support the cast as well, there's a Patreon link and a YouTube membership link. You guys can get your name on the title screen. It greatly supports the cast. And yeah, that's it for me. Thanks again, Shelby. Yep. Thank you for having me. Y'all better check out the Patreon.